Uh, we are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. Uh, we're a weird little brand that multi classes in tabletop game design, beard and skincare alchemy in the Bardic College of Content Creation. My name is Tony Vicinda. I'm Chief Alchemist here at Plus One EXP. Uh, we do a mix of different things, uh, but we also uh, we create games, but we also love helping bring other people's games to life. We do it in a few different ways. Sometimes it's by helping underwrite a print run or supporting art. Uh, but this is our first attempt to work with a designer to help take a game they've already created, do some development work around it and then publish it but over the course of the next month we're going to be doing public play tests of some new content for an absolutely phenomenal game that got its debut here on the channel called down we go by marcus um, i'm actually going to kick things over to marcus real quick to give us kind of the elevator pitch of down we go what it is uh why marcus created it uh but also then we'll meet everybody else uh right after that so marcus why don't you tell people a little bit about down we go uh all right uh down we go started as a thought experiment in my head. I've, I've uh, pretty recently gotten into the OSR scene, and uh, there are some games I love, some games I uh, don't love so much, but I started thinking about what the OSR is, and basically Dungeons & Dragons based games, and I wanted to like distill that onto one page, uh, like the entire rule system and the character sheets, and see if I could fit it on one A5 page. Uh, and that's an idea that's been like kicking about in my head for quite some time. And then finally everything just clicked and I sat down and I wrote the whole game in two nights and I'm very happy with it. I, I think it works, uh, both for one shots and campaigns. So yeah, I'm really excited and happy about this game. Awesome. Yeah. And from the first time I saw it, I was excited about it also, which is why I told Marcus like, Hey, come on stream and play the game with me. Marcus came on. We played with a bunch of amazing people who have come on and played more games with us also too, um, all from Sweden, which was awesome. It was super delightful. You can go back and check out that first stream of the game. Uh, and as just as part of that conversation evolving, I was like, I would really love to see some of the dungeons that Marcus had created and some of the other pieces compiled together and do a short little print run. Um, and so that's one of the things we're working up to right now. We're going to use a mix, mix of itch funding and Kickstarter for that. You don't need to worry about any of that. We just hope you'll come back here on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. and watch how this evolves. So let's meet some of our, our players who are going to join me and try not to die down in the dungeon. Uh, let's start out uh, right above me from our viewer's perspective, and that's with Richard Ruane, whose last name, look at, look how effortlessly I did that, right? Like, uh, I am uh, so I, impressed. I, I couldn't say it the first time Richard was on stream. It took me 30 seconds. <laughs> Seconds to get out of my mouth. I don't think I ever did it wrong. I just couldn't bring myself to say it initially. So, hey, Richard, uh, tell people who you are, what you do, uh, where they can find you online. First, Eddie, taking 30 seconds to say it right puts you ahead of most elementary school teachers in the state of Texas. I know because I had a lot of them who, who, who I went through. I went through multiple years with them and, and they still struggled. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, I am Richard Wayne. I'm the designer of Barrow Keep and Dark Designs and Vertigree and the upcoming. Uh, Chronicles of the Space Jammer Enox Week, which got a playtest stream here on Tony's channel, and I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. Uh, super excited to have you. Let's hop over next to our good friend MV. MV, tell people who you are, what you do, and where they can find you online. Um, you can find me online at mvmv.info, and I'm a screenwriter game designer based in Belgium. Um, just doing my thing. <laughs> Uh, if you like uh, smaller games or space stuff, uh, go check out uh, at mvmv.itch.io. And yeah, stay tuned. That may visit for lots of stuff this month. Awesome. Uh, and actually, give people just a real quick, you've got the Lux Collective going on right now also, too. Talk about, talk yeah, I was like that. saving that for later. but um, just, give, just give it a quick yeah. shout out. Uh, Lux Collective. Uh, you can find that luxcollective.crd.co, which is a uh, collective of game designers interested in itch funding and the Lumen system. And we're sort of just banding together to promote our stuff. Awesome. Go check it out. Thanks. Richard, if you drop me that link in the ch uh, on Twitter, I'll get it popped up because <coughs> we, we have links blocked because of right. spammers. Oh, um, right. So, yes. Um, but I do want people to go check out your game because it also just got another print run, I think. And so I need to it go buy get, yeah. the physical copy. Uh, I'm super excited about Lex, Lux Collective also too. Uh, and then last but not least, the most bloodthirsty member of our crew, both on the table and in real life, we have I'm Alex. so glad that's my reputation. Uh, Alex, <laughs> tell people who you are, what you do, where they can find you online. Uh, hi, 
My name is Alex Kingsley. As you've heard, I am incredibly bloodthirsty. Uh, I use they and she pronouns. I'm one of the co-founders of Strong Branch Productions. We're a small media production company where we make games and also podcasts. And the one that we have coming out right now is called The Stench of Adventure. It's a sci-fi comedy. And we, we just launched a Patreon. So you can give us money so we can pay our actors, which would be fantastic. And if you want to find me online, because I also do comedy and other things, other writing, uh, I'm Alexy Quest, like Galaxy Quest the movie, but with my name on pretty much every social media platform, Twitter, TikTok, Tumblr, whatever. There we go. Awesome. Um, you can find us at plus one EXP across all social media platforms or me at Tony <coughs> Lucinda. Uh, if you want to reach out, feel free to. But with that said, that's who all of us are. We're going to play Down We Go. We're going to go down into the dungeon. I'm just going to hand things over to Marcus uh, in just a second. Um, after we talk about safety, because I almost forgot to do that. So uh, we think it's great to have safety tools in place when you're playing a game because it keeps everybody free to focus on the narrative uh, and to have a great time. Our default here on the channel is lines, fails, and the X card. Lines are things that may happen in the world of our game, but our game doesn't focus on or touch on. They're they're off the table as far as things that we might uh, experience during play. Um, and so um, we have a strong line against sexual violence on the channel. That's never something we're going to feature. But everything else we like to have a conversation about. Veils are things that may uh, happen in the game, but we handle them delicately or handle them in a certain light. And the X card is the ability for anyone at any time to say X or type in X or message X to the GM. We'll pause the game and we'll say, hey, what, if we need to identify what the issue is, we'll identify it. Um, but otherwise, uh, if it's clear what it is, we'll just move forward in a different direction. So it might be a name is confusing. You're not sure what actually happened. Um, we just need to pause and figure it out. But it also might be something that's making you uncomfortable. And then we'll just figure out a different way to address what that is. So um, with that said, does anybody have any lines or veils that they want to name? I'm going to name as a line uh, sort of abuse and torture. Uh, OSR can get like pretty gruesome, and that's sort of my line. Mm -hmm. Good, noted. Anyone else? Um, I can't imagine this would come up, so I think we're fine. But my usual line is like any kind of homophobia, transphobia, queerphobia, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's good um and also like any any type of sexual violence did you mention this already? yeah sexual Tony? violence is all is our, is yeah. our strong yeah. heart always exists of course so. um, i also generally have like a veil towards like explicit sexual content in general mm -hmm. <laughs> again don't really think that is the kind of adventure that we're playing today but there's a reason there's no there. There. <laughs> there's a reason there's no bard classification in this OSR system. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, that's that's it for lines and veils. Um, so we'll hop into uh, characters. In in down we go. There are four. I call them roles. I guess you could call them classes if you want to. I call them roles. Uh, they are sneaky, mystical, holy, and bloodthirsty. And from the start, you get like uh, two points, two levels to to put in any of these roles. You could put two points in sneaky, for instance. You could also put one point in sneaky and one in mystical. Uh, every role has six abilities, things they bring to the table, to the adventuring party. Um, and for every level you have in a role, you pick one ability. So if you have level two sneaky, you pick two sneaky abilities. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward, and they are all explained uh, on the character sheet as well, looking like this. I actually have it up next to all of our beautiful faces right now on stream. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so I guess we'll go around the table and see what kind of roles you want to play, if you want to split it or just go all out in one role. And uh, let's start with uh, Richard. What are you thinking for your character? So I am thinking I'm going to take my two levels in uh, Sneaky. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And have you already picked out uh, your abilities? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with hide and lock picking. Hide and lock picking. Richard, do you have any way to boost your audio up just a little bit? I do. Will do. <clears throat> all right. All right. Um, yeah, and all the abilities work uh, level times per day. 
uh, I think, uh, with okay. some exceptions. I mean, hide, like if you're standing still, it, it works all the time. Uh, and lock picking, no, I guess they, no, level times per day. That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, do you have a name for your character, Richard? Uh, I'd like to go with uh, Borba. Borba, the sneaky. Borba. Perfect. Uh, cool. We'll hop on over to MV. What are you thinking? Uh, my question is... Yeah? Is the game limited to humanoid characters? Uh, no. What are, okay. what are you thinking? Uh, so my, my, you will get from the name. My character's name is Lava Ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, that is awesome. Uh, you can call them Lav uh, uh -huh. for short. They're level two mystical. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that they have two states, lava or ghost. And if they're <laughs> lava, they have their light ability, which oh. is 20 feet for two rounds of light. And if they're a ghost, they have invisibility for two rounds. Wow, yeah. that is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, they shift between the two. Uh, that's very much it. Lava ghost, I love that. Uh... Uh, okay, so light and invisibility. Is either one like the uh, uh, the default state, or that's a good question. I think it's easier for them to be in the lava state, just mm -hmm. because you can interact with the physical world easier. Mm -hmm. But when they're like when they're shy, maybe, or they just want to sort of escape, they turn ghost. So it's like I think it's fifty fifty sort of situation. <laughs> Cool, awesome, lava ghost, uh, and so light and invisibility, two levels in mystical. Uh, does this ghost have a name? Do they use names at all? Uh, well, lava ghost is their name. That's like oh, okay. what they're called by, or lav for lav. sure. Yes, lav, awesome. Uh, Alex, what are you thinking? Yes. Um, so I'm thinking my two levels, both in bloodthirsty. Of course. Uh, the my I've named my character Vora Knight, and he's gonna have alertness and rage. Alertness uh, and rage. Okay. Should I do I should I give my little uh, like just a little mini backstory for Vora Knight, or should I do that <laughs> later? Please, if, um, if you looks like you want to do it, so go ahead. <laughs> oh, I absolutely do. <laughs> Um, I, I came up with it like five seconds ago and I'm really happy about it. Those are the uh, best ones. <laughs> I have decided that uh, Voronite was a very sweet guy, just like the, the most delightful little kid, and then had to go to war to support his family, and then just realized he really likes killing. <laughs> <laughs> He's just really good at it. Uh, and it just, it just awakened something in him, and now he uh, he just can't stop. Perfect, perfect. Tell me, tell me the name one more time, Alex. <laughs> Voranite. V-O-R-A-N-I-T-E. V-O-R-A-N-I-T-E. T-E. Voranite. Awesome. Voranite. Okay. What what kind of war was he in? Um, I was I was thinking since so much of this world is like going out and getting stuff and taking it back to the city and selling it and all that, that it was some kind of like a raiding situation where there were uh -huh. maybe like two rival gangs. Awesome. Uh, and he joined one of those sides. Rival gangs. Perfect. Uh, okay. And alertness and rage. All right. Alertness lets you win initiative and rage lets you do two attacks, uh, but you draw a free attack from the closest enemy. Uh, so, Tony, the holy character, I'm guessing. Uh, holy-ish, you know, like there's, <laughs> you know, they're they're going down and in, into the ground for a reason. Uh, so I'm playing as uh, Thrag. Uh, he's an he's an acolyte of the Reclaimer, which is the god that I've randomly picked to call every weird char clerical character I've played in. Down we go since I've started playing it. Um, and, uh, they're not always named Thrag, but they're always a priest of the Reclaimer. Um, and so, uh, he is, has two levels in Holy, uh, and I just kind of started out classically with Heal, 
and Smite. Uh, those are those are the two that I'm starting with, and so uh, uh-huh. and I got I got a bunch of random uh, random gear that I, I typed I typed in. I do want to ask Alex. You asked a question right before we went live that did not <laughs> come up, and I, you don't have to share it now if you've got a reveal planned. But, oh no no I don't I'd love to share it now. Okay yeah go you you have a specific item in your inventory that you asked about that no one has ever asked before playing this game so tell us tell us about it. Um, I asked if living creatures could count as gear. I wanted uh, I wanted Voronite to have a pet, and I decided that Voronite has a pet vulture. Uh, oh. They met in in the in the gang war. Uh, this vulture was you know hanging out eating some dead body and he was like oh this seems like a cool guy i think i could vibe with this guy uh and just now he just kind of hangs out on his shoulder and whenever Voronite kills someone the vulture's like free snack uh, i haven't i haven't named it yet i gotta think about that one mm-hmm. yeah and alex one thing you you uh, if i may trouble you if you come up with a cool name for this rival gang uh that you fought uh, just tell me later and i'll make a note of it Okay, and they gonna... may or may not show up. I don't know. Ooh. All right, I'll like I'll I'll throw it in there in the beginning once I come up with it. Mm. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah. So gear. I mean, you can just basically choose what kind of adventuring gear you want. Weapons and armor does not count. Uh, you can carry ten items. I mean, if, if you want to, this is something I was playing around with in my head. If you want to leave some slots open. Uh, like to to pull out of your hat later when you get down in the uh, no maybe not actually no let's list the <laughs> stuff you uh, you want to carry with you into the dungeon. All of it. Um, I have uh, I'll I, I'll go first. Uh, so I I've got a mace. Uh, I've got I've got my holy symbol. Um, I've got I I have a skull cap that I wear around also too. Uh, I have three. Uh, I have basically like a big sack of of blessed salt, which I wrote down as basically being three uses, because that seemed about right if you're going to reach in and grab a, a handful out. Uh, a backpack, I have two things of holy water and uh, a crook also, too, like a like a big, long hooky-pulley thing um, that works as like a staff also. Um, and then a lantern with oil, three rations, and a canteen. Oh, and then I wrote oh. down spikes and hammer. Perfect. Anyone else want to share their inventory? And you said that weapons don't need to count, right? No, weapons okay. and armor does not count towards these 10 items. Because I initially had like a bunch of daggers written down, but man, this has really opened up my inventory a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, like, how, how much is a bunch of daggers? It, we don't need to go into that. <laughs> like, are they falling 10. out whenever you Less walk around? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, you know. <laughs> He actually wrote down you, bunch of dagger ten times, like ten bunches of daggers. <laughs> I mean, like you don't just get one torch; you get a bundle of torches. You know, so yeah, I got a bundle right. of daggers. You wouldn't buy just one. <laughs> okay. uh, it's, it's like wishing unless for it was more really wishes. nice. Yeah, unless it was really really nice. Uh, so we'll start with a. I have a crowbar, uh, lantern oil, tinderbox, uh, lockpicks, the uh, the standard classic ten foot pole. Uh, I do also have really, really nice boots. Yeah. Uh, ones that are, you know, not very noisy and then dark clothes. Um, I've got some kind of fancy hat, but I've not really decided on the, the nature of the fancy hat. Um, uh-huh. It's really important to have a fancy hat. It is. Uh, I, I, mean, I could not agree really, more. It, really, there's no point in stealing other people's stuff if you can't afford a good hat. <laughs> um, and then I've got an open spot, but I'm thinking of following you know the 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 newly the newly written pet rule and filling in with a badger mm. yes. do we uh, do we do, all do need badgers pets? and vultures get along does anyone know let's find out yeah i mean like i mean just <laughs> really depends on the bad badger and the vulture Mm-mm. yeah depending on your perspective the vulture eventually gets along with everything or eventually doesn't get along with everything. <laughs> it's, 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 it's what your perspective is but uh all right mv what kind of stuff are you carrying around okay um i hope this is enough stuff but i'm carrying a lantern uh some snacks a lava lamp a torch 
Um, also, I I thought about some things, and like it's very hard for lava ghosts to carry things. Um, <laughs> like their two states are either like a ghost that like can't hold anything, or lava that just burns everything. So uh -huh. I'm just thinking uh, they have like a heat resistant cloak that I wrote down. Yeah, basically it allows them in their lava state to actually like not burn stuff when they're interacting with it. Sort of like a mitten. Mitten is also one of these things I have. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just like <laughs> the mitts. Like, so. <laughs> I also have a heat resistant bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone's so dapper. <laughs> And also some sunglasses because it, it might get very bright. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if everyone's getting a pet, I'm also getting a um, a stone, uh, just a little rock that that I carry around. That's my pet. <laughs> does, does it have oh a name? my! Oh my! <laughs> does it have a name, Mb? Yeah, just rock. Just Rocky. Rock. Rocky, perfect. <laughs> Loving this lava ghost. I didn't write down a pet. Uh, <laughs> I've got a pet rat. Yeah. Um, it's okay. I didn't really write down food, so. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Should we be carrying food? <laughs> I have <laughs> food. Oh, yeah. oh, no. I don't think that's what's on Fortnite. I mean, mind. I guess if you have a pet, you also have potential food. I have I have one slot Smart. left. I can... I can uh, use that slot for like a, I don't know. What's your what's what's uh, Voronite's favorite food? I will carry it. <laughs> Ooh, uh, hmm. <laughs> saltwater taffy. Uh -huh. How how <laughs> melty are you okay with that saltwater taffy getting? Because I feel like incredibly. Okay. Oh, he'll slurp it up. <laughs> it yeah, it's gonna it. be burnt <laughs> by the end of this. <laughs> It's fine. He he goes bananas for saltwater taffy. <laughs> that, uh, that's how you induce rage. Is <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is he, he, it's like it's like the opposite of smelling salts. He pulls out some taffy and goes, <laughs> 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 and that's how he gets in the zone. This is awesome. Uh, all right, so I guess that's it for the characters. Did everybody? Uh, did we I go over inventory? Here. I'm sorry. I've not given my gear yet. Should I? Oh, do I'm that? sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, so I have my vulture. I've decided his name is Ted. Ted. Uh, okay. Ted the vulture. Um, so you said weapons don't count as part of the ten, but I would still like to note. Uh, I think he would carry two daggers uh -huh. and, and just kind of just kind of double fist in. Uh -huh. uh, I wrote down sick cloak. Um, because I, I think he, he wears a cloak that he can whoosh and he just looks really sick. Of course, um, yeah. You got to have that. Uh, hmm. I'm <laughs> uncertain about... Okay. <laughs> I have another like weird question about the gear. And then can, he, can human remains be gear? Human remains, of course. Um, <laughs> but I want to know whose remains it is. Uh, like the people that he has killed. Oh, wow. He's got one of those, you know, like you do. He's got one of those severed, numb ne severed thumb necklaces. Uh-huh. Uh, I also thought it'd be cool if he had like a Molotov cocktail. I don't know how he'd light it, but like he's got it. Um, if so you don't he know how he might just hold it close to the lava ghost. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, my, we have a lava ghost. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, I, I figured in his free time, he collects cool rocks. So he's got a bag of cool rocks, uh, some healing herbs for when he inevitably, uh, gets injured. And he's got a, a chain with the symbol of his gang, which is the Hornet boys. So it's a little oh. Hornet, uh, as opposed <laughs> to the rival gang, the big snakes. The he's always hated snakes. the lack of creativity in that name. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> the big snakes awesome um all right we're good to go i think 
uh, yeah, so the world, basically, I'm thinking, is a lot of ruins and dungeons, remains of uh, like past civilizations. Um, you have no idea how long any of these uh, previous people have been here. Uh, so there's a, a huge wilderness of ruins and uh, dungeons, and there's also Infinopolis, the, uh, the infinite city, a huge city just sprawling, uh, growing uh, all the time. And uh, the basic way of life, I guess, in this world is just going out, looting dungeons and going back to the, uh, to the city and uh, live it up. Uh, and I was thinking, since Tony and Richard, your characters will be um, with us, hopefully, for the whole time, or at least you as players, even if your character dies, uh, I'm thinking that there's a kind of a system going on. There's a guild of sorts that uh, like grants rights to raid dungeons. So I'm thinking there's a pretty newly discovered dungeon that you two somehow procured the rights to. And uh, if, if you want to just come up with something, like how did you get this deed to this dungeon? You, you may have won it, you may have uh, like fought over it, found it by chance. Do you have any ideas how you got this deed? Uh, Tony, what's your character's name again? Thrag. Thrag? What's Thrag's religion? He's an acolyte of the Reclaimer. Uh, the Reclaimer is a is a is a deity who is specifically worshipped by making offerings of things you find in the deep. So our religion oh. is built around going into dungeons and taking things and then bringing them back for our god. It may have been something really really awkward where I thought I had made up the religion of the Reclaimer and then applied for a license for this dungeon, claiming it was like a sacred to the Reclaimer. And then discovered that that was an actual institution. <laughs> and so they just they just attached a reclaimer acolyte to you, be like, oh, like that's fine. We'll give you access to that dungeon. But if it's a reclaimer dungeon, you've got to take one of these acolytes right. with you. Oh well, why didn't you let why didn't you let Thrag up in line with you? You know, <laughs> you're both here from the same temple. I love it. Um, yeah. So are you are you pretending to be an acolyte of the reclaimer also too then? I think I think it's I think it's a it's pretty obvious that I'm not. Okay. That's a yeah, that's I mean you know there's like a good log of of in the temple of, of acolytes of who right. the acolytes are. Right. Uh, but I'm not I the... think acolytes as long as we're getting access to things, I don't think we care. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm a lapsed reclaimer is what I've told you. Yeah. I was raised reclaimer. I was raised reclaimer. I really didn't think there were any other people. <laughs> Not raised. practicing. Right. <laughs> but I would like to go into this dungeon and bring things back out. Right, right, right. right. Cool, cool. Uh, before we start, I'm going to ask MV and Alex for, for something uh, as well. Uh, there is a legend of sorts floating around in, in some taverns in uh, Infinopolis. And this legend is about a legendary band of adventurers uh, called Gnork's Goons. Uh, allegedly, they consisted of five uh, adventurers. And uh, some legends say they were magical, mythical beings. Some other legends say they were had demigods. Uh, just a very mixed uh, a variety of legends around them. You're, you're not entirely sure which ones are true, which ones are not. Uh, but two of the uh, adventurers you have heard their names uh, are Whedon the Fighter and Jonu the Cleric. And I would like MV to tell me, what, what have you heard about Jonu the Cleric? Just a sentence or two. What, what made him special? Interesting. I think... I'm thinking all the problems of being a lava ghost in this world. <laughs> um, I don't really have ears <laughs> to hear things about people, I guess. <laughs> um, it's very problematic, but I can, I can see things. I think I've read a couple of legends about this cleric. Um, I think they've uh, mastered some sort of form of light magic. And th that would that would make like lava ghost interested in this because they're like they're very connected to light and that sort of type of magic and 
they're like, oh, this this cleric is using like another sort of source of magic to gather this power. And I just want, yeah, it's just very interesting to explore what they could be up to. That is awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, and Alex, what, what type of rumors have you heard about this Whedon the Fighter? Uh, is, do we have a gender for Whedon the Fighter? Uh, some rumors say he's a he, others say uh, differently. So you have no uh, idea what, what gender he was. Okay. So I, I, I just, yeah, I was just curious. Uh, I have heard that they were so strong that they didn't need to fight with a weapon. They would only fight with their bare hands. And in fact, had biceps so thick they could crush <laughs> someone's skull in between them. And Voradite very much hopes this person is real so that they could ask, so that he can ask for their hand in marriage. Oh, awesome. Uh, okay, cool. We'll zoom in on our adventurers uh, right next to a big mountain, a big, big, scary mountain, very tall. And uh, 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 just a um, tunnel leading into this mountain, a really dark tunnel, uh, pretty big. And uh, yeah, this, this is the new dungeon, newly recently discovered by the guild. And now the, the deed to the dungeon, the right to loot it, is with uh, Thrag and uh, Borba. So you're standing outside this uh, cave entrance. And what do you do? Hmm. Is there some sort of ceremony you need to, like, do? Uh, the Not till we get further in. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't know if there was, like, a, like, we needed to kick in a symbolic door or something. No, no, we we gotta. The, the, all, all of our ceremonies are happen in, happen in the deep. Okay. I have I have an idea. You said it's a dark tunnel, right? It is. Yes. Okay. I have my rock, Rocky. I want to attach a like a lava lamp to them. <laughs> okay. And and sort of roll them in, into the tunnel to see what's up uh, over there. To light it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, how, how big is this lava lamp? Like, yay big? How big is it? Yeah, like a, not, a, not a very big one. All right, cool. That's a, that's a great idea. Um, does anyone else want to do anything before uh, uh, Lav rolls this lava lamp in, down the corridor? Down the Imagine it, it, it's like a glow stick that's like r reddish color. That's kind of the vibe I'm doing. Is this <laughs> yeah. like okay, you cool. distilled a little bit of, of lava, your your lava essence into a, a lamp? Is that the, the concept? Of course, here? it's very useful to have a like throwable lava essence <laughs> for some reason. I am going to uh, sort of stand behind one of the edges of the cave so that uh, if anything gets stirred up, mm -hmm. we have the uh, we ha I have the jump on it rather than having the jump on. <laughs> uh, Vorinlein is not actually going to do anything. I just want to note that he's so excited to just get down in there that he's like hopping back and forth from <laughs> foot to foot. Uh, he's just raring to go. Awesome. Uh, all right, so you uh, you you roll this lava lamp, this uh, makeshift glow stick, down the corridor, down the tunnel, and uh, just a couple of feet in, you notice that the walls uh, turn metal. There, there's not rock walls anymore. There's metal, and the floor uh, and and ceiling as well. You can see as it rolls down, it lights up the corridor, and it ends about thirty feet down, tw twenty feet maybe, uh, and it smashes into a uh, metal door and just stops there, lighting up this metal door. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll make my way down the, the tunnel behind it and just kind of take my crook uh, and like give the door like with the, with the butt end of it a solid like hit. Mm -hmm. And how far is the, Ella, how, how long is this crook? Uh, it's probably about eight feet. <laughs> All right. Well, when you when you get this close to the door, uh, you uh, notice that there are some kind of symbols. It looks like a language of sorts. You you can't read out what it says. It's not human tongue. 
seems to be painted in some dark red paint. Uh, kind of looks like warnings, the, the way the angles of the writing. And uh, it's just all over the door and a bit on the walls around the door as well. Um, hmm. Can can the rest of us see? We can see this happening. Like, can we see the markings on the door, or only only Thrag can see it? Yeah, I'm thinking only Thrag can see them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I call out like Thrag. Do you see like a, a handle or a lock, a bolt? Uh, I don't know. I just the, there are these odd symbols down here. They don't they don't look like any sort of divine tongue. Um, I don't know if they're runes or something else. Uh, hold on, and I'm just gonna like stab at some of the symbols with my with my staff uh, you, you do see a door handle i'm sorry there is a oh. handle on this door <laughs> there is yeah. a door handle <laughs> i just missed it because i was so distracted by all these by all the symbols, symbols yeah around it. um uh so i'll uh i'll reach out uh, is it is it like what kind of handle is it is it like a, a pull handle or push like or is it like a a twist handle uh, or just a static just like a regular door handle like a twist you twist it down I'll use my my crook to to pull down on the handle. Mm -hmm. Where where are the rest of the party? While Thrag is, uh, are you standing? Do you go up um, to him or do you stand outside? I, I, I'm, I'm going up, mainly mm -hmm. going up cautiously because I've seen him like come backwards with the handle on with the, with the crook on accident. Um, you know that's the crook needs a berth. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just in case the crook comes backwards, I'm sort of approaching cautiously. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, okay. And Voronike, what are you doing? Uh, he, once, once, uh, someone's already in, he's going to kind of run up behind. And when he sees these symbols and you said they're in like a dark red, right. Uh, he's going to, uh, go up and lick one to see if it's blood. <laughs> <laughs> and you immediately find out it is blood. He uh, goes, that's oh, blood, wow. and then he looks. <laughs> so, uh, like a, a so, sharp iron flavor. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, yeah I'm, I'm getting distinct iron tones. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm just assuming that Voronite knows exactly what blood tastes like. Oh yeah. Yeah. He puts the bloodthirsty and bloodthirsty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so Thrag, you you uh, you you open the door, right? Uh, yeah, I hook the handle and then I either I either push or pull it, whichever one makes sense based on whether I can see the hinges or not. Yeah, well, you you get it open. Uh, you you manage to uh, like twist the handle down and you you uh, notice that it opens inwards. Uh, and you all see a that this metal corridor just continues down uh, to a little junction up ahead, maybe twenty feet down. Uh, the walls. The, the ceiling and the roof, uh, the, the floor is all metal, like a really dark metal, very shiny, uh, very, very polished. And you also notice that past the door, all the walls are covered in these little intricate symbols. Like from a, when you're standing just a few feet away, they just looks like, they just look like straight lines. But when you look at them closer, they're actually small symbols. Are like those lines of text, maybe. Written in blood? No, they are uh, like etched into the metal. Do they match the, like, does the script look similar to the script on the outside of the door? Not at all. Uh, these uh, etchings on the walls in behind the door, they are uh, more of a, like a fluid style, round shapes. While as the, uh, the uh, symbols on the door were more, jagged like brutal okay but is it still not in a language that we can read no uh so about 20 feet ahead of you is a uh junction you actually see a lantern standing in the middle of the junction or a bit to the side uh lighting up this junction and you see the corridor continues past this junction like straight ahead from you and it also makes a right turn and I think, yeah, you can actually see some light further down the corridor straight ahead of you. So that we twenty feet ahead of us, we see the we see the junction with the lantern in it. And then yep. beyond that, we see more. And also, is this like a 
a like a like a flame oil lantern that an adventurer would carry or is this something that's sort of like stuck like up for like illu general illumination that would like be here it, it, it looks like the lanterns you you uh folks are carrying okay yeah i look at dragon just like does do permits mean anything anymore just i mean it you know i know nobody from the temple has made it out this way also i have i have no idea what's happening with all this metal i I don't like it. Like this doesn't feel <laughs> right. Um. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, once people get a little bit of money, they just go overboard with a decoration scheme. Yeah. They just <laughs> take take beautiful earthen tunnels and rock and dirt, and they just cover it with metal for no reason. All right. Well, first, I think we need to figure out who is coming and putting lanterns here. Uh, I'm going to go up with my crowbar out to look at the lantern, uh -huh. and uh, and just make sure like it looks like a normal lantern you might buy at like you know Lanterns R Us or something. <laughs> lanterns uh -huh. R Us. Um, All right. Like, like, does it look like something we would get in the city? Does it, does it, is there anything weird or unusual about that lantern? Is there a brand name? Is there a brand name? <laughs> is it from Bob's recognize? Lantern Depot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. That's exactly because right. No. That's, there's not a Lantern Depot in the city. Yeah. You know, you got, <laughs> yeah. It, it looks very normal, unsuspicious, uh, inconspicuous. It, it looks exactly like the types of lanterns you would bring with you on a on a dungeon raid okay. and uh as you're standing right next to the lantern you can also see uh, down down the corridor to the, to your uh, right and you can see lights further down it looks like another lantern uh, about 20 feet down the corridor and you also see a door right next to it on the right side so lantern to the right and then light up ahead beyond yeah. the, beyond yeah. where we're standing now so yes <clears throat> We got a lot of people in here who don't understand permits. You guys got a permit? And they got we have a permit. Oh, I mean, that's, we why, got a permit. that's why we're here. Oh, I thought we were. I thought we were just going down here for fun. <laughs> oh no, you know I'm very law-abiding. What one person's work is another person's fun. You know what I'm saying? I think right, right, right. Also, I I love my work. Lava Ghost is yeah. just. Oh, like... I, lo I love my work too. Lavagos joined you along the way, and you don't know why. <laughs> we just accepted it. All right. Like just, this person's coming. We'll take it. Look, Look they're made Mom of lava. always said I don't know what that we if a lava do. ghost shows up, it's going to be a good day. Yeah. All right. So uh, um, how, how do you want to proceed? So I, I'm interested in this door. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, the first, it's the first door we found. In there, one of the tenants of... Um, of the you know an acolyte of the reclaimer is if there's a door underground you open it like that's just you know um like, of course you know, uh, now there is another Reasonable. tenant that says you always poke that door a few times before you <laughs> open it uh, and so uh i'll make my Maybe way first. down towards the uh the door uh down that right corridor um mm -hmm. are is there is, is, are is there script around this door or is it is it uh is, is it handle what what am i seeing here you are seeing a uh metal door very similar to uh the one you opened going in uh, you also notice that the corridor uh continues past this door quite some quite some way and it also makes a a, a left turn like 15 feet away from the door uh you also notice does everybody go up to the door with Thrag? Or do you? Uh, I, I, yeah. Before I do, I want to uh, a kind of poke at that lantern with a with a crowbar, not like breaking it, but just sort of like gentle poke, mm -hmm. the mimic the mimic test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then if it's if it passes the mimic test, then I'm just going to take the lantern with me because I'm not leaving it for those people to find their way back. Huh? The people who came in here without a permit to our dungeon. They they should have gotten a permit. They they got a letter. They, 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 we, we could have avoided this if they had just gotten a permit. But right now, of course. All right, smart. Well, the lantern passes uh, the mimic test. So you bring it with you. And yeah. uh, 
All right. You can all hear uh, like sounds of someone snoring behind this metal door. Like a couple of individuals. Like really obnoxious snores? Or... Yeah, really loud snoring. There's some deep sleep happening here. Uh, I'm sorry? There's some deep sleep happening here. Yep, yep. Um, uh, all right. I uh, hate to me... interrupt some REM, but you know. <laughs> well, uh, what if what if what if we opened the door but tried to not interrupt their REM? Right. But you know, if we do interrupt the REM, they'll they're the ones who are going to be at sort of a disadvantage, though. So yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all for like not making noise going in, but yeah. Why don't uh, Why don't you take Why don't you take the lead on this one? All right. Uh, crowbar out again. Is there a handle? There is a handle similar to the to the previous door. So it's just a you just depress it and it sort of like slides open. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use the crowbar to uh, depress it and then uh, open it as quietly as I can. Mm -hmm. um, no problem. Uh, the rest of you, where where are you at? Like standing behind uh, Borba or behind and giving some light with my various light sources. Uh, okay. Borna is mm -hmm. like coming up kind of kind of crouching uh next next to borba with you know daggers out he's he's so ready to like kill some people in his sleep yep. in their sleep so just getting ready to go i just awesome. also appreciate how warm and bright lava is <laughs> in the lava form just yeah yeah every party should have one right uh all right, the, the handle slides down easily. You, you uh, open the door very slowly. It does not make a sound. Whatever hinges it, it, it's on seems to be well-oiled, well-maintained. Uh, you, uh, you instantly see the uh, source of the snoring. You see pretty much in the middle of the room. It's a pretty big room, metal all around, just like the, the corridor. Seven humanoid forms shorter than a human you notice and uh like a warty lumpy skin and tufts of hair there are seven of them just sleeping on the floor very close to each other is there an exit from this room or it's the dead end uh there's a corridor straight across the room uh from the way you entered this is the only way in and out of the room yeah okay okay all right and they um, seem to be they continue sleeping they have not heard you yeah if they're just sleeping what's up i make i make a lot of motions at uh at borva which are not decipherable because we d we've never done this together before and you have no idea what i'm trying to communicate <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm gonna very slowly and quietly close the door hmm with everybody of you inside the room, or or no, you want no, to? No, no, I think we're, I think all, we're all standing. Still. We're all, we're yeah, all we standing outside. outside. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm? Uh, no problem. Or you, you gonna make a little pouty face at the door closed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my my thought is we just sort of, I say after we close the door. My thought mm. is we just sort of like jimmy the handle so it won't open. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, huh? So uh, they, they're kind of stuck in there because, you know, that's sort of what you get when you enter a restricted room space without a permit. When, they, <laughs> when you don't respect the bureaucracy. That's right. right? Uh, how, how does the door open? Like, did it, did it swing inward? Did it swing outward? Did it slide inward? Like uh, inward. Just like a regular door, opened inward. You press the handle down and you open it inward. Um, I mean, I, Borba, you're probably best suited to this task. Yeah, I, I have my lock picks out, the little screwdrivers in my mouth, the like, you know, the the files, the everything are like in my. And I just want to reverse unlock it. Uh huh. Reverse unlock it. Just so the latch does not will not will not release correctly. All right. Do, do you have any kind of tools with you for this? I kind do of task? have lockpicks with me. You do have lockpicks. All right. Yeah. Um, 
and you have the ability lockpicking. Do you want to use that or? Yeah, I think I'd like to. No, no, I feel like we may have an emergency. Let me roll for this one. Cool. So because we've not can... seen dice out yet. No, that's great. So roll me a d20 and add your whatever you have in sneaky, no. and you want to hit 15 or above. 15 or above. It is a six. Um, so no. All right. So uh, I guess you actually wait. Let's roll for this if you make a sound or not. Uh, no, you, you don't make a sound, but you, you don't really manage to uh, jimmy the lock to, to, to get it locked. Did you get it taken care of? No, no. They, they like, they, whoever made these door handles never tried to like surreptitiously lock anybody in a room before so because they've just made it impossible so i i think I, I may have a solution i'm gonna take one of the spikes i brought with me and put it over the exact same uh like the lock the lock hole uh, and i'm just gonna drive that spike through it and hope for the best all right that's, that, that, that sounds that's pretty gonna, loud that's gonna be noisy oh yeah but i just did it <laughs> all right cool so uh, it, it actually does make a lot of noise and uh, you can all hear the uh, snoring kind of stopping and voices starting to uh, like chatter, talking to each other. You do not recognize this language. Uh, they seem upset from the pitch and volume of their voice. Uh, and pretty soon afterwards, they start running for the door, uh, which is locked now that you drive like a big spike right into the lock. Uh, and they start banging the door, screaming. All right, I took care of it. <laughs> All right, I put out the lantern they had out there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, take out the little wick. I, I don't want to like spread oil everywhere, but I'll take out their little cloth wick out of the lantern. So I'll put it out, take the cloth wick out, and just uh, make sure this lantern cannot be relit. The one they had lit outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, yep. No problem. That you do. Is there, is it like completely closed or there's like a slit or something uh, in the uh, door? Yeah, there is a slit, but not big enough to, uh, like, I mean, you could slide a paper or something under it, but you couldn't see anything through the slit if you if you tried to look through it. We could just hear them moving around inside. Towards the yeah. And uh, eventually, like, like right after you uh, remove the uh, wick from the lantern, you kind of hear them stop banging and their feet running away from the door some other way. Success. They well, hate I mean, the darkness. You know, I was, was going to kill them, but it's fine, I guess. There were, there were a lot. And... We, we, we could have used fire. Just, there's always fire. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not mad, he says, holding both of his daggers out. I'm not mad. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so what do you want to do now? <laughs> yeah, what do you want to do? We go down the big central hallway or we go down the one this way or we go back to the left where it's dark and no one's been yet. Uh. I think we should continue down the corridor that we were like just in. Um, like the main hallway. To, yeah. So we continue down the main hallway. So we're gonna go. Yeah. We're yeah. Gonna go back. Sounds good. Sounds we're good. Backtrack and then go the other direction. So, back to the junction and continue like down moving the center. north. Yeah. Yeah. Continue moving north. Where you where you saw a light up ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yep. You you have no idea where these uh, voices and sound of running feet went they they uh you, you don't hear them anymore i'm sure they went back to sleep yeah of course uh, of course i mean Why if somebody they? turned out the lights um yeah but you I go really you go back brought a oh, sharpie so we could have left a little like get a permit <laughs> on the wall. would this be a lesson to you you know yeah. i usually put chalk in my inventory and i forgot to yeah and i apologize for that <sighs> no no you should not blame yourself for their failure to get a permit <laughs> all right so you go back to the junction and uh, down that corridor, uh, like after twenty or thirty feet. Wait, uh, who is who is? You're carrying the uh, the lantern, right? Uh, I've got a lantern, and I think uh, that uh, Lav has is the the glowing rock. 
Oh yeah. I'm the I'm the big I'm the big light source here. Okay, cool. Bob has the the lava lamp. Yep. I have all the lamp. I'm partially <laughs> carrying the law the 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 lamp the lantern we found. So this the first lantern we found in case we need to throw it as a yeah. as a makeshift bomb of some kind. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, this corridor, like after twenty feet maybe, uh, opens up into a, a slightly larger room, uh, like a rectangular room. Um, and you see that it is full of workbenches. Uh, and you see tools lying about on the workbenches. Uh, you, you kind of notice right away that everything seems to be in a, like a meticulous order. Everything is lying. All the tools are lying, like exact same space from each other. Someone is keeping a, a running a tight ship in this, uh, yeah, whatever it is. Uh, you see the corridor continues past this room like a long room. And there's also, uh, in the middle of this room, a corridor going east. Uh, of, of these tools, are there yep. any hammers and or saws? Uh, when you look closely at the tools, you almost don't recognize any of them. Like, ah. these doesn't look like tools you've seen before. I mean, this might be a hammer, or it might not be. It kind of resembles a hammer, but... They, they all look very uh, strange and almost alien. Look, if it's a hammer, uh, you could if it, if you can hit something with it, it's a hammer. Yeah, then it's a yeah. hammer. That's, that's exactly what Fortnite's thinking. So he's gonna like pick one of the like vaguely hammer-shaped ones yeah. up, pick it up, and kind of shrug and go, "I found a hammer." I mean, there's uh, you know, the hammer, the wedge. Yeah, you, there are only so many simple right. machines. Um, and it's just, it's all uh, these workbenches. Are there any materials in the room for making stuff with? Uh, when you look around a bit closer, you see like underneath the benches, there's a, like a shelf underneath the bench and some of them have metal parts lying around and you can actually see what resembles a metal head, like a humanoid head. Uh, very crude, very, uh, like the lines are very straight. It doesn't look organic at all, but looks like someone is trying to build or, or deconstruct maybe uh, like a metal head. Is it like socketed? Is like, I mean, like, are there like eye sockets and like a, a neck? Imp like, is it, is it completely filled or is there like <coughs> ability to like? Oh. Yeah, it's empty. It, it's like a okay. shell. Okay. Yeah. I want to, I'm going to take one of the skulls and I'm going to hook it onto my crook. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, of course. You want to carry it around on the. Uh... Yeah. Oh, a little bit cool. of style. Awesome. You got it. Um, that's that's that looks sharp. Uh, it, it, yeah, I, I mean, I thought it looked pretty good. Um, I, uh, it's, I mean, that hat is amazing. It's nothing, nothing like that hat, but uh, I, uh, you know, it, it might be, it might be valuable later on. I mean, uh, how it many, how be. many, yep. how many metal skulls are there? Yeah, uh, just the one, just the one, just the one. Okay. okay. Um, and maybe, maybe I'll dump some of the other metal twists into my backpack. I guess if they're, if they're lots shiny. of metal shiny and look like they're worth money yeah um uh, yeah there are I'll, like I'll, I'll keep my hammer that's not a hammer mm -hmm. uh you can write the those down and and uh keep track of how much stuff you are carrying oh yeah uh you also notice that the light source you you noticed from before uh is another lantern in the uh seems to be in the next room um like going up the main corridor north I just so, the audacity. <laughs> hey, look! After this adventure, we'll be able to start our own Bob's Lantern Depot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then I'm right. I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't even know that you could get a permit. I've just I've just been you know hanging out outside the city, just going up and down. I didn't know I didn't know there were laws about this. I mean, not everybody can get a permit. That's kind of the thing, right? Mm, yeah, would I would I get approved for a permit? And then he kind of like strikes a little like angry pose. Um, I mean, all right. So uh, how do you want to proceed from here? <laughs> there is a co <laughs> corridor down to the east from this workshop room, and also a corridor 
leading north to another room uh, with a lantern in it. Um, I'm going to keep on going I north. Like, I feel like we should check out that lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Huh? So we're going to head north. Uh, yep. You head north. Uh, a pretty large room, almost as big as what you saw of the uh, where the uh, humanoids were sleeping. Rick, uh, like a square room. Uh, the lantern is in a corner, lighting up the whole room. You immediately see uh, broken glass cages, like a metal construction that uh, once held glass on the sides and top, but the glass is completely shattered. Uh, you also notice straight away really big, like bugs, maybe big insects of some kind just lying dead around these glass cages. Some are still in the cage dead, and some are on the floor. Uh, and also a very big, silvery, shiny, what looks like a shedded skin. All right, I, I, I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> huh? uh, do these bugs look like, are there any like non-giant bug analogs for these? Are they like beetle type? Are they like roach type? Are they like... <clears throat> Uh, there are some that resemble beetles, some resemble, uh, like centipedes. Uh, yeah, so random, uh, like three or four different kinds of insects, beetles, okay. uh, centipedes. And maybe, this... a... oh, hmm? sorry. No, go ahead, please. I was just gonna say the skin, does it look like, like an exoskeleton of like a similar large insect or like a snake skin? Or like a person has shed skin. <laughs> no, it looks like a it looks like a huge insect uh, huge shedded insect. this skin, okay. and okay. the shape of this skin is more like uh, is it called silverfish in English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like a silverfish skin. I know. I know that immediately uh, <laughs> that uh, Voronite's concern was that big snake had had shown up, and this was a giant big snake skin. <laughs> um, the yeah. big snake gang. Um, is uh, did the did the dead insects look as if they have been killed violently? That they starved to death? Like are they are they intact? Are there holes in them? What what's their physical state? Uh, it does not look like they died of hunger, like they starved to death. It, it looks. I mean, some of them have huge bites in them, bite marks, and like pieces of them are missing. Cool, 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 cool. cool, um, cool. And once, uh, once you uh, you've grown accustomed to the sights of these uh, dead bugs and the broken glass and this huge skin, uh, there you also notice like a big metal cabinet uh, that you didn't see at first. And where is the lantern? In the the lantern was in this space, right? Yes, it's in the north uh, west corner of this room, okay. lighting Is it, it up. Close to anything? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Um. So, one of the were the cages broken into or out of? Like, or the, is the glass like spread out from the cages, or it like crashed into the cages? That's a good question. You notice the cage closest to the big shedded skin is broken outwards, and all the rest of them are broken like inwards. Okay. Um, mm. I'm going to go up to the big skin. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pull on it a little bit to see how durable uh -huh. it is. Is it like shed? Like, does it like tear apart or is it like tough? It's very tough, actually. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to pick up some of the broken glass and put it in my bag of cool rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know if that counts as additional gear or part of my existing <sighs> gear. I'm fine either way. Uh, no, you can just, you, you don't have to fill a slot okay. for that. Okay. He just wants to, wants to collect some of the glass. Mm -hmm. um, and did, did, did any of these bugs look like they have like, like, usable meat on them are they like big enough that like oh that's a snack uh 
whatever meat they had on them is desiccated a long time ago. They look really old. Oh, okay. And dried up almost. What are you thinking, Lav? I forgot I don't have a mouth, but I think um, <laughs> uh, Lav will be sort of um, like they, they're taking Rocky in their hand and putting them down. I'm not sure if Rocky is alive or not. So <laughs> I, I guess I guess they're going to like push them and like roll them around. Oh, okay. And I think Rocky acts like a like a dog and Rocky is just like like sort of <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and um um can they roll something or anything? Like maybe they can maybe Rocky can sort of get a uh like a scent and uh the direction of a creature that th did this. <laughs> I like that you gave your character no ears and no mouth, but gave your <laughs> Your rock pet and <laughs> the ability to smell. It only yeah. makes sense, I think. Who are we okay. to judge the laws of lava? I'm creatures? not. I'm not yeah, judging no. anything. I am thrilled. Yeah. By it. This is so awesome. So yes, okay. Uh, Rocky <laughs> is uh, alive, uh, some sort of life, and uh, is it a it, a he, or a she, or it's a it? A? Rocky lava. Okay. Thing. Rocky. Uh, actually does pick up a scent you notice nice <laughs> um and like uh do you, like do you want rocky how do you communicate with rocky um well they're lava so they're gonna i think okay this is amazing lava creatures are going to communicate with uh, their color mm. uh the color of the lava so I guess like orangey, that's the like neutral state, mm -hmm. but like maybe they want to signal, there's more like emotional signaling. So like blue and green are like more calmer stuff. Red is like violent probably. Like um, one of those mood rings. <laughs> yeah, that might be it. Uh, okay. Well, uh, he doesn't uh, it doesn't change color or anything but it, it starts to move like back down the corridor he came from mm -hmm. like that's that's the way the scent uh, uh goes okay. yeah do we want to open this Thank cabinet you, or does that seem like a bad idea i oh, think we should open the cabinet idea. yeah mm -hmm. i vote number one open the cabinet number two follow rocky do we know rocky's name it's Rocky. But like like us as us as characters, uh, we know Rocky's name. That's interesting. Because <laughs> would it have ever been communicated to us? Or is he just gonna be like, let's follow that moving I, I rock think, that's alive somehow? I think it's like it, it's all the names that like you just know. <laughs> like you don't right. have to like hear it somewhere. Oh yeah, of course it's Rocky. Like right. there's like, no other like, oh. like Love has never like objected to the fact that we just call Rocky the Rock, <laughs> like they I, it's just like, um, uh, that's so funny. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I vote open. Hmm? I vote Great. open. Uh, the cabinet. Okay, there's a it's a it's a tall metal cabinet that's taller than uh, any one of you, and it, it has a it has like two handles. You open it like that. And uh, are uh, those handles locked at all? Locked? Um, no, they don't seem to be. They they don't even. You don't see any locking mechanism on them at all. What uh, I'd suggest is that like Thrag and I open one side each, and Vornite attack anything that comes out. Ooh. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we get kind of positioned. Yeah. You on awesome. one side, me on the other. Vornite in the middle. Uh, love, love. Do you want to back me up? I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna stand behind. <laughs> I wanna prepare some lava rocks to sling. Um wait a minute. Okay, you you, you both reach for the handle. Do you wanna count this down or how, how do you how do you make sure you do it at the same time? We've already, we've already, already matter. We've already Yeah, I think it's just one, two, three. Yeah. We've already established okay. that I like to motion things, so I'm gonna go <laughs> and then pull. 
All right. Uh, you open both doors and you notice that you immediately see that there's no like backside of this cabinet. It's a, it's a hole cut up in the backside and a corridor, like a rocky stone corridor uh, continues Ooh. down. Well, I, I, just, and, I just whip and, in those good earth and scents. While you are all standing here, looking at this cabinet opening and noticing this uh, secret passage, you notice uh, you hear you all hear uh, running feet behind you from oh. the from the workshop room behind you. Oh shit, guys! We should get in the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could get in the cabinet. I love it. Goes or I goes. or I could stab this guy. Just throwing it out there. What are, what are people feeling? Uh, cabinet feel... stab. Cabinet stab. Cabinet. Yeah. Cabinet. Yeah, all right. I, I, all right. I'm on number. All right. Cabinet could. it is. All right. We could. Love yeah. Ghost is going to take their mitten and like pull you in the cabinet. The <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me safe, love. <laughs> I know I can always depend on you. Uh, okay. So um, love takes uh, the lead and goes into the cabinet and starts pulling people in. <laughs> yep. Um, Yep, you, you, uh, I guess, I'm guessing you close the door behind you. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no handle on the inside, but you kind of like get it somehow shut. Yeah, uh, we can push it in, yeah, pretty much. I'm sorry? We can like sort of just sling it like in, sort of. Yeah, just yeah, yeah I can use the, the edge of the crib bar to sort yeah, of yeah, exactly. hook it back. Yeah, uh, well, you, you managed to get it shut and you hear uh, the sounds of uh, a lot of feet. Like uh, more than one, more than two, possibly more than three, and you hear the same types of voices you heard from the uh, sleeping humanoids banging on the door, and they start banging on this uh, cabinet as well. The sound echoing through this uh, narrow, rocky corridor you are all huddled together in. Mm. It's, yeah, uh, and you see that it makes a right turn pretty uh, pretty soon after you entered, but you can't see what's around the uh, the turn. I feel like fleeing. We've already established like we're running away. Yeah, I, I feel like if, if yeah, it's we're gonna not going to be a real strategy fight, change for us to like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pro pro probably not the time to fight a huge huge mob. Right. Yeah. I. I yeah. I really wish we'd put out that lantern in the in the other room. Wait, crap! Did Ro <laughs> did, did Rocky make it into the cabinet in time? <laughs> Uh, Rocky's with us, <laughs> please. Okay, that's fine. Just... <laughs> Rocky zoomed back. Rocky like sees a bunch of people coming and starts rolling the other direction. <laughs> Rocky was like, the first like one. When, uh, when yeah. Indiana Jones grabs the hat under the uh, yeah, sliding yeah, rock door, like exactly Rocky right before it closes. Right. Yep. And, and does Rocky hit one of us on the way in? <laughs> mm, sure, he could. <laughs> um. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all about moving down, moving through this corridor quickly. If we're, if yeah, we're doing it. that's that's the name of the game. Down, down, we go down. That's awesome. Down we go. Awesome. All right, you you keep going. You turn right, and you immediately notice like a sweet scent of something. It smells almost like a. I mean, w would either of your characters uh, have partaken in uh, some uh, doobage, perchance, like smoking <laughs> something not legal? Would either of your characters have been into that? I um, mean, lava is like constantly, like on fire. Does that count? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, no. it, I mean, it's just also like this is how you like if you if you can't defraud bureaucrats, you've got to bribe them with something. So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, you you notice that uh, it, it smells uh, like like some kind of herbal uh, marijuana type of smell. Uh, and you also see, uh, like 20 feet down this corridor, you see it opens up in a in a little room, a square room, and you can hear laughter and you can hear like mellow voices. Seems to be in the same language uh, that you heard before from these uh, footsteps chasing you. Um, Who are these jerks? And a really thick, thick, sweet aroma coming from this room up ahead. Uh, it is lit up uh, as well. All right. Um, I mean, I feel like at this point we're going to have to, I mean, you know, we're going to have to talk our way through this or fight our way through this. 
I think if they're stoned, we should talk or we should start by talking and then also steal their stash on the <laughs> way past. Okay. Um, All right. I you yeah. Wanna... I, I think I'm probably used to incense and temple smoke and other mi- mind enhancing slash altering uh mixtures. So uh yeah, I mean I'll 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 head that way. Huh? Does this also smell like does this smell like like good stuff? Uh, uh he, he oh, said he said God. Swedish, like sweet ish, not Swedish. Uh he said sweet ish, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that sounds like better stuff. That sounds yeah. like sh- that's I I, the good I, shit. I, I yeah, yeah. I, I I think I just I take one whiff and I'm like street value, man. This is <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. yeah, it smells like the, the good stuff. The resale um, value on this is dun- dungeon I, herb. I think that Voronite, uh, the only drug that he knows is the thrill of the kill. So uh. he's really confused by this. And it's like, is someone like growing plants? Someone uh-huh. like Yeah. Plants? Growing and smoking. Remember that remember that one time you told me you ate that guy's adrenal gland? It's kind of like that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but a little awesome. more mellow. It's like yeah. eating an adrenal gland, but it's also sort of like a calming effect. Right. Okay, great. Okay, great. So they're really calm. So that's the best time to throw some fire. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna try to talk to them first. Okay. And okay. Then, okay. Yeah. Like have yeah. the, have your have your knives ready. I tell yeah. fin, I tell Finlo the badger to get his knives ready, and there's really nothing more wonderful than looking at a badger just <laughs> staring off into space, sharpening its claws. <laughs> I've seen this. I've seen this. Uh, who goes first? By the way. Uh, I'll go first in this situation, I think. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so you head up into this room. You you notice that it's uh, covered in uh, soft materials, like big pillows, uh, big uh, sheets of fabric, very colorful, kind of a Moroccan vibe going on in here, like purple, yellow, uh, teal, like different colors. In the middle of the room, there's a big silver silverish water pipe uh with a lot of uh like what what do you call them like so four people can smoke at the same time it's a hookah yeah a hookah yeah and you see uh actually four of these the same humanoids you um that uh that borba saw in the sleeping in the room before uh and they're just lying on big pillows uh some of them are smoking some are just one is passed out, maybe, and the the other, the other one is saying something to the third one, and th- they just seem to be having a really mellow time. Uh, besides yeah. that, uh, hold on a minute. Uh, where are we here? Besides that, uh, you see some sacks, like um, this high. About uh, they seem to be filled. Some of them fell over and spilled out. They seem to be filled with some kind of dried herbs. Uh, and you also see an opening, like a dug opening. Someone tear down the metal wall, and there's a rocky opening to the left in this room. Uh, and they don't seem to notice you. W- well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I, I, I just kind of like walk up and like slide up near them, and like the, like I kind of like take whatever. You said they're making kind of like barking noises. Uh, yeah. I'm just like kind of like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, like fraternizing with the common folk, <laughs> yeah, like, like slightly affirming, slightly barking <laughs> noises, as if I can understand what it, I, it, it's the it's the hundred percent the inner species equivalent of like I'm trying to laugh at whatever joke they're making, even though I uh-huh. walked up after that joke got made. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you get the attention of two of them, and they kind of look up at you, and you notice their eyes are just, yeah, they are stoned as, yeah, as stoned they're, they can get. Very stoned. Uh, very, I... very stoned. And one of them just, like, makes a, a, a motion for a dagger in his boot, but no, uh, doesn't uh, really uh, have the uh, energy uh, to, uh, 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 to get it out of his boots. No, 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 no. <laughs> um... uh... Where is where is whatever whatever they're smoking in here has to be coming from somewhere. 
Um, is it like coming up from down below? Is it being loaded in somewhere? Like we're I'm, we're looking for their stash. Yeah, you. Oh, was it uh, one of the sacks? Yeah, yeah. I was. I was. I, uh, I'm going to casually walk by on my way to the uh, the where they've torn open the the wall, uh -huh. and just kind of kind of pick up a sack. Uh huh. Uh, All right. And you also see uh, into this opening, and there's another room in there. It seems to be equally uh, covered in pillows and comfy materials, uh, the same color scheme decorated. Uh, and you also notice another humanoid, uh, but Ooh. bigger than these uh, types smoking in here. So there's, and he, whatever he or she is just sleeping, snoring loudly in there. Everyone's sleeping over here in the and this is and this is like in the in the room I went into. Like or as I as I move towards the, the torn down portion of the wall or Yeah, as you move towards it, this, this is what you see in there. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um and I'm I'm gonna just casually leave some lantern oil container right by where I picked up the sack and Put the sack under my arm and just kind of casually stand around and watch what Thrag's doing. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. In order to assist Thrag in uh, getting the good faith of the people, Vorda is going to come up and offer some of his cool rocks as like a peace offering. To the humanoids uh, smoking? Yeah, like the one who was like reaching for a dagger. He's uh -huh. being like, no, 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 no dagger, rocks. All right. Um... This humanoid uh, accepts it with both hands and uh, like looks at it, turns it around, tries to bite it, like yeah, rah, 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 makes some kind of sound, passes it to his friend who does the exact same thing, turn around, tries to bite it. Uh, you, you hear the snoring stop in the next room and someone is getting to their feet. What does this person look like? Since it's uh, it's a goblin. Yeah. If they notice me, then I'm just be like, "Hey." Actually, I think uh, I'm gonna use one of my daily uses of hide right now. Just kind of slip into the shadows. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go. Yep. All uh, right. I'm just gonna be like, "All right, yeah." I'm just gonna stand really casually in the shadows with this unlit marijuana bag. And uh, uh -huh. try to be okay. as conspicuous as possible. I'm so what is uh, what is love uh, and uh, 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 <laughs> what is love and Rocky doing right now? Um, I'm just thinking to. So I could also like go invisible, um, or I wonder like, what's the sort of uh, advantage of like magical light over like using lanterns? Is it more like, is it just more light <laughs> or is it uh, cool light? I'm guessing the main advantage is you, you can't just blow it out. That's also true. Hmm. Uh, that's good to know, but I might not use it in this room. What are the exits from here? Uh, just in the next room where the metal wall was torn down, uh, like a dugout room uh, mm -hmm. in the rock. And, um, oh my God, I'm sorry. There's also, <laughs> so sorry. Uh, there's also a small corridor leading up to a door, just like five feet down, uh, going down south. Okay. Um, yeah. And this person in the next room, this uh, like slightly larger goblin, slowly gets to his feet and just staggers out and stands pretty close to a borba i guess and just mm -hmm. looking at you like from the top to the bottom and like, like he you can see his brain trying to figure out who the heck you are and what you are doing here disturbing him and and i like i like i'll motion towards one of the one of the like the um the pipes that's not being like smoked currently, right? And I'd be like, ah, mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> oh, like you're trying to get this 
Goblin, Goblin to smoke, to smoke yeah. some more. Yeah. Um, actually, I'll roll a d6 for this. Ooh. Um, no. He he uh he seems to uh like sober up a bit. Uh, you see his eyes uh, like fixating on you, and uh, he uh, he points to the four of you, and uh, like you you can't understand what he's saying, but it, it seems like he's asking like, "What the heck are you doing here?" No, I'm hidden, right? You are hidden, yes. Okay, yeah. So the, yeah, the four of us, including Rocky, like you know. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. oh, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're hidden. The three of you. Uh, and, and the uh, vulture and the rats. Yeah, and let's let's not forget Ted has been on my shoulder the whole time. Because <laughs> I forgot Ted was on my shoulder the whole time. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, uh, uh? uh yeah, and it, like this this uh, person's voice, uh like the sharpness of his voice actually gets the, the four other uh goblins to kind of start getting to their feet as well, but they don't seem too hostile yet, just more like Inquisitive. Oh maybe. no, I know. I mean, you know, this isn't my first time down in a dungeon. As soon as, as, soon as they start to make their way to the foot, uh, I'm going to take my mace and I'm going to smash one of them right in the skull. <laughs> All right. What about the rest of you? What do you want to do? Uh, we'll roll initiative in a bit. I just want to see how what everyone is doing when Thrag uh, just, pulls out his mace. I just I, wonder if it's possible for me to fill, like. If someone throws a like bag of uh, these herbs at me, is it possible to fill the whole room with smoke? <laughs> <laughs> like if they throw it at you? Yes. You want to evaporate it into smoke? Up. Yes. Instantly. Of course. That's that's such a good idea. Yeah, that's, so, that's, yeah. that's, I, I had, I, I, that's what I'm do right over the larger <laughs> goblin's head. I'm just mm -hmm. going to smash this large bag of, of, of marijuana into lav. Just to like right. set off. I don't know. But, it could uh, just be fun, also recreational, but also it, it seems like effective. <laughs> it's it's very recreational dungeon. Okay, now I know what you would like to do, but let's roll initiative right now. Uh, one of you guys can. One of you folks could do it. I'll take the first one. Okay. <laughs> I should not. And if, we don't go first. If it's if it's a four to six, yeah, they go. First. So they they go first. Uh, the the does leader my, does my alertness do anything if you want to use it we can win oh but it's all it's using it uh once once per day yeah yeah once per day per level per level yes so if you have two in bloodthirsty you can use i it do twice per i day. do so i got two of it yeah, yeah let's... you want to go back and use that yeah is, is that okay are you okay with that yeah sure sure yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna use it okay so you have the initiative and let's start with Thrag and his mace. Uh, you can roll me a, a d20 plus your uh, bloodthirsty level to hit. I rolled, and a, I you rolled can... a 15. Oh, so that's a hit. I was going to give you a plus two for, for them being stoned, but then it doesn't I got matter. A 17. So you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's just find the bestiary here. Um... All right. So So who do you hit? Um, I, I, the one closest to me, I mean, it's not the big guy, so it's one of the, the ones who's, uh, getting up. Uh, let's say the one who went for his knife, because I kind of had walked over towards him, so. All right, um, all right. Uh, yeah, you just bash his skull in. He just instantly dies when your mace hits him right on top of the head. Like, if anyone saw those old movies with Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill, they were always just, like, fighting. He always hit people on the top of his head with his fist like this. So if you just obliterate his entire head, and he falls, drops down dead instantly. I'm like, huh? Ah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Wh whoever wants to go for uh, after Thrag. I'll throw that right at Lav to see if I can set the uh, deck of pot on fire. Perfect, I accept it. <laughs> like, uh, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, ready. this is so cool. You you throw this bag of herbs at Love, and it just instantly catches fire, and uh, turns all these uh, dry, brittle leaves into uh, a sweet-smelling smoke that very soon is going to cover the entire room. And then I'll I'll tap the larger goblin on the shoulder. Okay. So, you know, I, I've I've just thrown something from this position. I figured he's going to see me eventually, but you know. <laughs> I like to scare him or 
I just, you know, say hi. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I figure at this point he's he knows he knows I'm right behind him, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well get him to turn around now. Awesome, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, love and Voronite. What do you want to do? You can still do something, uh, lobby. Yeah, <laughs> I've just accepted it. I think I'm gonna. Mm, I want to. I wonder if moving my position moves where the smoke smoke emanates from. <laughs> uh, but I want to move closer to the uh, the big goblin, uh -huh. and to sort of uh, dance around them, and that's my turn. <laughs> All right, like uh, cover him up in a cloud of smoke. Yes. All right, and uh, Voronite? Uh So he's gonna jump at whichever of the our four buddies is holding the rock that he gave Beth. Uh -huh. He's gonna say, "All right, give that back to me," and he's gonna jump at them with knives out. Um, and this is what the aim is. The aim is. One is it is it okay for me to get specific with violence, or do you not want me to do that? I'm fine with it. Fine by me. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the go aim is one in throat, one in belly, and then bring them together. Oh, horrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, roll me a d20, uh, and uh, add if you you don't have any levels in bloodthirsty, so it's just a straight up d20 roll. I know. I thought you. She, but they say, I think Alex is the only one with levels in blood. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. Two. Yes. So one D twenty plus two. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. But I don't. I don't also get the uh, high bonus. Yes, you can get the high bonus. So plus Ooh, another okay. two. Eighteen. Eighteen. That is a hit. And I, I just heard the sound of your dice rolling around. I'm gonna. There's an optional rule in Down We Go that says if your dice ever ends up on the floor, your character just dies instantly in a horrible and gruesome way. Uh, uh, I should have mentioned this before. I'm not <laughs> sure I'm going to... I think it's a fun thing, but... I promise uh, what happened was it got so close <laughs> to the edge of the table and I just kind of pushed it back. Yeah, I heard, so yeah, I'm yeah. Safe. We heard the table I'm shake. <laughs> yeah, I'm safe. No dice on the floor. You are safe. So you are safe. Um... All right, that's a hit. And uh, this thing you tried to do, one in the throat, one in the belly. Uh, and yeah, it works like a charm. You you slice this guy up. Uh, whatever goblins have inside them just starts pouring out on your feet. Uh, all of you acted, so it's their turn. Um, so two of them are dead. Two are standing, and the leader uh, just got a tap on the shoulder. Uh, and in a cloud of smoke. <laughs> in a cloud of smoke, yes. Uh, this leader is just going to start pounding with his fists, trying to hit something in this smoke. Uh, so I'm going to give him a... No, you 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 roll defense. That's right. This, uh, And I'm guessing I'm going to roll to see who he hits from uh, Love or Borbuck, since you two are standing closest. Uh, it's going to be Borba. He's going to try to hit you. So you roll a defense roll. That's a d20 plus if you have any level in sneaky. I do. Um, you so do. I, you have I'm, two I'm levels. I'm sorry. A, I'm looking for a 15, right? Uh, no, you are in combat. Uh, every opponent has a difficulty rating. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll let you know if it's a hit or not. Ah, it's a five. <laughs> and that is... Uh, so he hits you, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can take one hit of damage when his pummeling fists start hitting you. I just want to clarify, Richard, you know we're rolling D20s, right? Right. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> you only rolled a 6 and a 5 so far. No, so it wasn't a D6. Right? I, knew, I knew you weren't rolling a D4, but other than that, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, and... yeah, I mean, those numbers are on a D20. I have proven those many times. <laughs> <laughs> I do really well at roll under games. And the other two, uh, they're gonna hit. Uh, they're gonna hit. Uh, one of them is gonna try to hit Thrag, and the other one is gonna try to hit Voronite uh, with their fists. They're they they're not armed at all. So roll a defense roll. I each. rolled. Uh, I rolled a nineteen. 
Yep. And Voronite. A seven. A seven. Uh, so Thrag, you have no problem avoiding this uh, stoned goblin trying to hit you. Awesome. You, you kind of dance around. Uh, by the grace Voronite, of the reclaimer. Yeah. Uh, Voronite, you, you get hit by the fists. Uh, like he's in a frenzy, just hitting everything. Uh, so you take one hit of damage. Um, and next round, let's roll initiative again. Somebody else take it this time. Uh, it's a D6, right? Yep. Yep. All right. That's a four. Uh, so you go first. All right. So uh, you can pick your own order. I can I can hit another one of these guys with my mace. I'm down for that. Um. Yeah. I want to just go grab the stuff off the bed and uh, throw the bed clothes on top of the big goblin. Mm, awesome. Uh, you can actually roll me a, a sneaky roll since the room is uh, starting to fill up with smoke. I mean, you have no problem grabbing the cloth, but uh, to, to cover him with it is a different situation. That is only an eight. All right. So you, uh, he, he managed oh, to. It's an huh? 11. It's an 11. Sorry. It's an 11. Uh, all right. Wonder if I should do this against his difficulty or the average of 50. No, you, you're trying to cover him. So let's use his difficulty. Uh, you managed to cover him in uh, fabric. So he's draped like a colorful Moroccan mummy or something. Ooh, it's a ghost. <laughs> And the room is really starting to uh, fill up with smoke right now. And you can all, like, you're, you're starting to get affected by all this smoke. <laughs> Do I? Uh, <laughs> no, maybe not you. <laughs> I have a question. And huh? it's, can uh, us, Drag and I, since we are fighting other dudes and also there's the smoke, can we see the, the sheet draping happen or is it too obscured? Uh, I imagine, like when you when when you move the cloth, the the all the smoke clears away, uh, for an instant. So you, yeah, you can all see this happening. Okay. Um, I am just gonna hit another one of these guys. The one who just tried to hit me, I'm gonna try to hit them back. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and that is uh, that's a seven plus whatever, nothing, something. Uh, uh, plus two. Plus two, nine. Uh, the stoned bonus. Uh, no, that's not enough, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, it must be the smoke. You, you, you kind of misjudges where you're supposed to hit, and you uh, miss this guy completely. Okay. Uh, so, Love and uh, Borba. Yeah. No, Isn't Borba the... did the uh, cloth thing. Love is... The, the big goblin is still standing, right? Yeah, covered in cloth. Mm, I'm thinking if I should sling some Love... <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use lava as a weapon, I, I think, um, mm -hmm. and sort of take, uh, I think I can take pieces either from the lava lamp or from myself and sort of just throw them at the big goblin. Okay. Um, sort of like a ranged attack, I think. All right, um, cool. So kind of like p just picking up a rock and throwing at this. Yeah. Or, or, are you imagining Except the lava to have some kind of special effect? Like, do you want to set him on like, fire or? Yeah, it's like lava. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's right. pretty hot. I think. Let's go with that. Yeah, you can roll a bloodthirsty roll, attack roll. D20 yeah, plus. Nope. And you don't have any no, levels no, no. in bloodthirsty. It's a 16 plus two plus zero. This is just 16, okay. Uh, but that is a hit, so he takes one hit of damage, and that actually uh, gets him to fall over. It seems to hit him straight on the head and top of this uh, fabric draped uh, goblin chieftain, and uh, he falls over. Seems to be passed out, or dead, you don't know. <laughs> but he okay. falls over. Uh, that was a good hit. Uh, okay, so it's them. Oh, I haven't gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Born no, it's not good. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to note that Ted is gonna leap off my shoulder and start feasting on the on the remains of the guy that I just killed, 
and then Perfect. I'm gonna go for the guy who's going at me now, mm -hmm. um, and probably just say something along the lines of, "Hey, stop that!" Uh, and and then just go uh, so similar double fisted move as before, but this time they're both either side of the neck. That's oh. where he's going. Harsh. Yeah. Watch the floor. Not on the floor, but also not a good roll. <laughs> Just trying oh. to psych you out. <laughs> How much did you get? Uh, it's a nine. That's plus, a nine. Is plus that plus two? the uh, stone bonus? Yeah, no, that was with the bonuses. All right. So, uh, no, you do not manage to uh, uh, drive your daggers into this guy's neck. Uh, and then it's their turn. Let, wait, I, I lost track of how many they are. Uh, you... There are two left standing. Yeah. Uh, the big guy. No, the big and guy the big just guy got is knocked lying down. down. Oh, right. No, yeah. You're, yeah. He's not standing. Uh, so one of them is going to hit Thrag. Both of them are going to hit Thrag. Why? Uh, I didn't just try I, to stab one of you in the I guess they see throat. you dealing out they damage like with me. your mace. Um, so roll two defense rolls. Uh, that's a 19. It's Roar Knight's infinite charisma. Uh, and that is a nine. So 19 and a nine, uh, is what I rolled. All right. So I don't you, know if uh, I bonus you managed to, uh, you managed to dodge the first attack, attack perfectly. And, uh, you kind of get caught off guard with another, the next attack. Poopy. Uh, so fists start hitting you, uh, right in the gut. So you take one hit of damage. Okay. And uh, next round. Uh, MV, you want to roll a d6? Sure. That's a one. That was a very bad roll. Okay, they go first. Uh, they actually start backing away, you notice, very slowly. Uh, start backing out of this room, down this uh, short corridor to the door you haven't been in yet. Uh, with their, like, facing you, backing up. And uh, they're holding up their hands, uh, both of them, and they look kind of scared. Okay. So they, they both slowly start to back up towards this door. I and guess... it's your turn. Yeah, I guess... Um... I'm gonna hit one of them oh, with my mace. Giving up, I'm not gonna attack no, they them. punched that guy. Just punched me. I'm. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll for it. Uh, that is a. I rolled a nine plus two for the stone bonus. I guess. So all right. On. So yeah, that is a hit, and uh, you managed to kill another one. Where do you Where do you hit him? Uh, in the stomach. This is like blow for blow. So he punched me in the stomach. I hit him with a mace in the stomach. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, he falls down, uh, um, seemingly dead, not moving I, at all. May I go for the other one? <laughs> you may. I just want to make sure I was trying to go out of turn or anything. It's a nine again. Including the bonus. <laughs> Including the bonus. All right. Something seems to have happened. You you just you hit air with your daggers. And you've got you've got plus two for your bloodthirsty and plus two for the stone bonus, right? Yeah. Oh. And you're rolling D20s <laughs> bummer, bummer. also. My rolls are just sad. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, he's gonna say, Ted, what is up with me today? <laughs> so Borba, what do you want to do? Uh, the big one is down, right? Or yep, he's yep. he's covered in he's like covered in sheets, or is he like yep. injured? Okay, I'm just gonna tie the sheets off, like make a little sack out of the sheets. With him like, inside it? Yeah, with him inside it. You know, just kind of tie yeah. it like you're like you're making a laundry bundle. Uh uh, -uh. It's the awesome. old sack of sheet maneuver. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's a like hey, it's a goblin in a bag. Uh -huh. All right, you, you managed to tie it up, and uh, this body is not moving at all. But, yep, you, you make a nice little package there. Oh, I, uh, I, was, I, I thought he would be still sort of up and resisting, but, you know, oh, well. Oh, no, he's just out cold. He's not moving at all. Okay. Do you want to right. change what you're doing? 
Oh no, yeah, yeah. I think with that, I will. Um, I'm gonna curl the crowbar at the one that uh, Voronite missed. Uh -huh. See if I can acquire a stone bonus. Uh, uh, so just... I'm gonna say, since the room is filled with smoke and they are in combat, I'm not gonna give you the stone bonus for okay, this gotcha. one. Okay, gotcha. All right. Uh, is there any chance I'm accidentally gonna hit Voronite? Uh, if you roll a one, you might hit Voronite. Yes. I can take it. <laughs> it's just like I, I, I <laughs> if it's only on a one. Um. Uh, it is a five, so a, yeah, it is a flat up five. <laughs> and you know, it, it, it you're rolling this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the crowbar. Well, thank you for hits, checking. Uh, uh, the crowbar kind of uh, hits the wall behind them and just lands on the floor. Uh, did all of you act this round? Lob, did you act? Yes. Uh... Not this round. Yeah, not this oh, round. Yeah, not this round. Okay, maybe. so love. Um, I know. I remember my action was not attacking anyone. Um. Oh yeah, but you can go I ahead might, and do something. I might. Um. Like, I want to like somehow signal to Voronite. Um. Do I have their attention? In lava ghost language. Um. Yes. <laughs> So because you start changing colors. It's a it's a specific uh, sequence of colors that stands for each character. Um, Vornite is like it's red, red, red for bloodthirsty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's great! And Vornite, do you know about this color scheme of yours? <laughs> Uh, I imagine it's one of those things where I don't know, like, explicitly, like, it's not like we just, we cannot discuss it because uh, they don't have a mouth, but, yeah. like, I just kind of know, I see, like, red, 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 and I'm like, <laughs> red, that must be me! It's red, red, red. Um, and I have, like, I have the saltwater taffy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, I, I, I fling it to you. Um, and his his eyes just like light up. They like go <laughs> huge, and he's like saltwater taffy, and he tries to catch it in his <laughs> mouth. Um, I hope I hope that does something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> let's like just go with. Taffy. If you want to catch it in your mouth, go ahead and do that. Because I okay, mean, great. the image in my head is so cool with you catching it in in the mouth. All right, great. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to roll for it. Uh, but I would like you all to roll a d20 plus uh, two, since everybody is two in one roll. Uh, this is for uh, like withstanding the uh, effects of the burning weed. Oh god! That's and you want to hit fifty? I got a seventeen. <laughs> so, 17. It came back around. The uh, one roll I'd love to fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I rolled a Can't 13 hit anyone, plus two. can't yeah. get high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, and what about uh, Thrag and uh, War Knights? I got 19. I, I got a 13. You said plus two, so I've got a 15. Weird. All right. So you so... all managed to uh, like withstand the, uh, the effects of the smoke. For now. For now, yeah. Uh, and the smoke right now is covering the entire room. It's getting really hard to see anything in here. Uh, I mean, when you move around, parts of it like wisp away, but goes back in an instant. Uh, and it's initiative again, right? Yep. Alex, you want to yeah. roll it? Yeah, sure. Very far from the edge of the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one. Okay, so... Uh... Sorry, Jane. <laughs> They go first. Uh, big guy in, in the uh, covered in cloth, still not moving. Uh, and the one, no, they're still two standing. Yeah. Uh, they open the door and they, they just start running away. Cool. Uh, you see them uh, like right, be, right past the door. There's uh, like an intersection. Uh, a door on the right, corridor going forward, and a corridor going left. And they make a sharp left and start running down that corridor. 
your turn. I mean, uh, we could go after him. That's true. Uh, I feel like we'll probably go that way anyway. But uh, Lav, you want to, and then he's going to like gesture to the big guy who's down. Like, just in case, you want to like, you know. I got him. I'll just you bring do? him over my shoulder. <laughs> and then like fireman carry. All right. D- does anyone, does either one, does any one of you want to uh, pursue them? I mean, I'm, if we're going out that way, I'll make my way towards the towards the door, and uh, I I'm gonna, yeah. I'm trying to decide if I want to use my big magic or not. Um, I yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, whichever one is further away, I'll, I'm going to cast Smite on, which uh, Ooh. which you know cool. seems like a little overkill, but but why the heck not? Why the heck not? How 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 does it look when you cast smite? Uh, so you, when I any cast, movements? Yeah. So when I cast smite, uh, no, it's like I I it's it's like I point uh, like this, and then I just like transition it to a thumbs down. And, <laughs> oh. uh, the uh, uh, we see kind of like dark shadows kind of pop up out of the ground uh, and oh, start God. and start pulling whatever the subject is down towards the ground, uh, and if they. If they succumb to it, they they like just get their flesh gets ripped off their body. God. So, okay. So, so it just shadow claws at them and pulls pulls towards the ground. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So you completely smite uh, one of them, flesh ripped off the body, uh, and a goblin skeleton just takes another step or two and then just falls down. <laughs> uh, I wanted to do that to the one in front. Any chance the one behind him? <laughs> <laughs> changes what? his mind about running like because they i don't know if they, were they side by side or was there one who was like in in the lead uh let's say one was in the lead yeah okay, yeah i wanted to do it to the one in front so is there an impact to, to the other one does he like stop does he <laughs> Psychologically, all right that's awesome maybe. we'll roll for it uh yes it is like he immediately stops just falls to his knees and just kind of he doesn't know where to go like if i take another step that's going to happen to me he right. just Freezes, goes down to his knees and just stands still, stays still. Uh, I haven't, I haven't gone this round, have I? No. Uh, no. That was that was the first thing. I've, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, okay. We we talked a lot about what we were gonna do, but I think yeah, I was the we, only one who we actually did a thing. We didn't do anything. Uh, in that case, I think I'd I'd like to walk up to this one and take out uh I, I he doesn't know if it's the one that hit him but he just assumes it is and takes out his what he calls a hammer that's not a hammer and says hey don't hit me again and then bonks him on the head and uh, the goal is to make him unconscious or ah, probably you wanna... just to kill him all Unless, right did we have a reason we were trying to keep them alive would anyone would anyone protest to uh, yeah. to Voronite? He just likes killing. Right. I mean, we wouldn't be working with Voronite if we had severe protest. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You probably, probably would have picked someone else to go down to the dungeon with. Like we've held Voronite back so much this this mission. Yeah. Right. He's right. Like, come on, come on, I need it. I need it. Uh, you don't even have to roll for this. Oh, cool. Uh, so you can just describe how you were off this goblin uh it's it's just a straight up bonk right in the head yeah yeah he Uh, might even say bonk as he does it oh (laughs) cool yeah uh, this guy just slumps over completely lifeless uh blood start trickling out of his cracked skull he's gonna say ted have at it ted uh, kind of like jumps over and starts feasting on the flesh good boy good boy a little pat on the head all right. Uh, well, we've still got one unconscious one that we can question. Maybe. <laughs> did unconscious? you put him over? Did, are you carrying this guy? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, I'm gonna check on him, see if he's unconscious or uh, unconscious. You, I, I guess you can like feel him breathing <laughs> over your shoulder as you're carrying him. So, so uh, he seems to be alive. Yeah. All right. So 
So what do you want to do now? I'm guessing like the lot of you are standing outside this door that they ran out of. Uh, so we the just corridor... want to go through this door into the corridor before we do the question, do the questioning. I'm sorry. Do we want to just go through this door into the corridor before yeah. we do some questioning? Yeah. We want to see what's That's in there. Not a bad idea. Did, were there any other sacks in there? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There were. We should. We like should a bunch of them. We should get those sacks. I'm gonna mm. yeah get one of the sacks and uh, also my you know my thrown crowbar. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, all right. So when you go back into this room, the uh, uh, smoker's den, uh, the the guy you're carrying starts like moving about, making sounds, kicking a bit, still very stoned, slow movements, and not very hard. Oh wait, there's still there's still a lot of smoke in this room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I I was actually going to do this. I I I was going to go I can go back in and get the sacks. You've already got the guy. Uh, I'm going to take my yeah. my skull cap off uh, and I'm going to douse it with some water from my canteen. Uh, and I'm going to put it over my mouth. And then I'm going to walk back in and and I'll, I'll I mean the crowbar is probably by the door, so that's probably an easy grab. Yeah, but, yeah, I threw it that this direction. I'll yeah. just like with my toe pull the crowbar. I'm, I'm gonna, but I'm now. gonna make a makeshift ventilator mask, like like they teach you on all the TV shows whenever you have to run into a fire. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, I'm gonna go retrieve how I don't how many sacks of this drug were in there? Uh, five sacks. We, we burnt one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get those other four sacks and drop them in my yep. backpack. All right, cool. Um, and then you all like congregate in the corridor. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm gonna describe what you have around you here. Uh, all right. So behind you, there's the uh, smoker's den you just uh, cleared, kind of. Uh, there's a corridor going down to your left uh, where they tried to run away, and you can notice that uh, like 30 feet down, it makes a sh sharp right turn. Uh, there's also a corridor going straight forward um, with 10 feet down. You can see a, a what's it called? A portcullis on that the left is, side. That is down, down is south, correct? Um, so we've got one going south and one going west? One going south and one going east. East. If right. if we're thinking, I'm sorry if I'm mixing up the directions here, but uh, I I think I like twisted the map. It doesn't. When I it doesn't if, if I want, things if from I your perspective, cheat, I have this map. I could look at it. I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I also for, absolutely for, ne for next week. I may set up segments of the map that I can move across as we work through, so we can show them to people. But, oh, that would be um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and on the right side of the corridor, like the portcullis was on the left side, like ten feet down, uh, but. Kind of immediately on your right side, you have two metal doors that look different from the ones you've seen before. Uh, there's no handle on them, uh, just two pieces of metal with a slit in the middle, like almost like they would slide open. All right, I think it's time to question our hostage. <laughs> uh, okay. What language do we use? Oh, I've got to... this. All right, We're all right, hard. and and he does his usual with that withholding the knives. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so maybe maybe rather than un untying this guy, I think the easiest thing might be to do like <laughs> to like cut the fabric at the top and just let his head slide out. That uh. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just like slice the fabric at the top. Yeah, like mm -hmm. let like let his let his head slide down in the hole. And I go. Uh, so, so you like like stand him on the floor in the middle of you. Uh, or. Or just, yeah. you know, he's on his shoulder, whatever, upside yeah. down, halfway upside down, whatever, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, you make this hole. His, his face pops out. He looks uh, stoned and kind of angry, but yeah. Uh, he's got a badger on his back, too. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh, huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? All right. What, what are you? Oh, what are you trying God. to say? Um, <laughs> I, I think in my. I think in Thrag's mind, um, uh, Thrag is basically saying like, "All right, you you were gonna attack us, and we attacked you, but we won. Uh, uh -huh. And so now tell us what we want to know." 
All right. Uh, let me roll for this. Yes. Uh, you, somehow, some way, you, you, you seem to break the language barrier and uh, make yourself understood. Uh, he gets like a look in, on his face like, all right, fair enough. You beat me. So he kind of relaxes. He, he stops moving and uh, just looks at you like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll say so this can be reasonable. Um, uh, do, do you, uh, we'll just call it common for right now because that works. Do, uh, do you speak common? Uh, like he, you can see him thinking and he, he's like, some. Um, uh, what's behind uh, this door? And I'll point at the, the door, the, the, different type of door uh which one do you point at like the first the, the one double, or the, the double doors that are different than all the other ones not the portcullis yeah there are there are two of them oh oh i thought, the they, I thought they, one they, the... oh yeah it's not a double door it's two different doors yeah i see that uh, i also thought it was a, a... Uh, oh I'll i'm sorry i'll point oh, at no, the you're one, fine. i'll point at the one on the left uh first both of them are on the right. The, the closest one or the furthest one? Right, but if I was going to... Oh, so they're both on the right side. Uh, so then I guess yeah. th then I'll, I'll point at the closest one. Uh, he, he kind of like like shrugs his shoulders a bit and shakes his head. What, what about the next one? He, he, he kind of like... He, he gets a special look on his face and he just makes a sound like... A slide whistle. <laughs> All right. Uh, good to or know. A long drop. Uh, yeah, long drop. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, how do how do, how do we open this up? And I'll point at the portcullis. Uh, muscle. You don't have a switch. No, no, like a lever. Uh, like when you make this motion, he starts pointing at the the portcullis. Okay. So you guys aren't really from around here, are you? Uh, mountain, mountain. I, I, you know, you're supposed to have a permit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, they, they I was not really aware. Thank you for this. letting me know. Which is with bureaucratic voice all of a sudden. No. <laughs> Look, there's an application permit. process. And everything. There's like you go to the office for you know, for you know, antiquities, and you, you file a, you, you file a, you file a application process. It's okay. I didn't know this either. <laughs> so you know, don't feel bad. Yeah, you lost him. He has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, can I give them some snacks? <laughs> yeah, sure. What what type of snacks are there? Uh, are they? Snacks. I imagine it's like um, some biscuits, um, some uh, dried uh, fruits. It's it's mm -hmm. very healthy. <laughs> I have a healthy collection of snacks. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you want to like put them in his mouth, or do you, do you feed him? No, I just I have this mitten <laughs> that prevents the snacks from being burnt, and I oh. sort of gesture them. Uh, yeah, he starts like he wants to eat them, and he he eats them off your mitten. Perfect. That's yeah. Like, that's what I wanted. We're all gonna need uh, some snacks in a minute. What are, what, are you, <laughs> what are you guys doing down here? What are you doing? The snack break. Uh, uh, like he's trying to search in his mind for the right word. Uh, uh, survive. Okay, just hanging out. Just hanging out. <laughs> Wow, I feel bad now. <laughs> wow, only. No, I don't. I mean, we tried to not fight like the first, however many of them. I I gave up one of my rocks. Oh, I didn't get my rock back. Right. Um. Um. Hmm. All right. I mean, I think the real question is we have to decide what we're gonna do with this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not gonna do anything to us, I guess now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is apparently a real big hole behind one of these doors. <laughs> so that's an uh, option. Uh, the other option is we just 
tie him upside down and hang him up, hang him leaving somewhere inside this sheet. Or, or other, other option, just throw it out there. <laughs> we could just give him a little extra of, you know, and then like leave him just sort of in one on one of the couches. That's, that's, that's a good, yeah. I mean, I think, I think we can secure him and subdue him. Uh, in yeah. as in as gentle of a way as possible. Don't worry, right. don't don't worry for a night. There will be more to stay. Right. It's All just right. once All you've right. had a conversation, I feel like it's we could have been on a coffee date. I mean, I've had plenty of coffee dates that ended like, you know. <laughs> so I've I've had some that made me want to do that, but then I yeah. All right, no, it's fine. It's fine. You guys have the permit, so it's cool. <laughs> Um, so we'll, yeah, I, mean, I guess we'll go secure him on a couch and give him a good dose of, uh, of medicine and mm -hmm. let him pass out. Yep. He seems he, really anxious right now, which is understandable. And, yeah. and mm. all right. So he passes out comfortably. Cool. Uh, might this be a good time to uh, call it a night? Oh, uh, we can, um, but we also don't. We we should figure out: are we are we extricating ourselves and going back to Infinopolis and selling off this stuff? Because we won't necessarily have MV and Alex with us next time. All right, so so uh, let's keep going a bit further. Okay, um, I mean, like, however we want to find our way out, because uh, I, mm -hmm. I think. Right now, our choices are fight our way back through a bunch of gobliny knoll things, or find a different exit. So, uh, but this this giant sack of of medicine that we have with us is uh -huh. uh, is probably worth a pretty penny. Yeah, like I don't mind going back to town with this. Yeah. We got the shmoney we yeah. were looking for. Yeah, you got four pretty large yeah, sizes each. of a. Uh... It's perfect. Yeah. So yeah. I guess uh, uh, the question is, do we want to fight our way back through the angry door hitting your cabinet hitting uh, creatures, or do we want to try to work our way around? Hmm. Or we could just let them in, hide, and then go around them. That's a great. We idea. have two characters with I mean, invisibility. I they're going to so. be coming into a room filled with smoke, and we let them like pour in, and then we sneak back out around them close the doors behind us, relatch the doors, and then leave. I'm down for that plan. That sounds like a great plan. All right. Sounds good. Sure. Okay. You want to run this plan by me one more time? Sorry. Um, like we, we draw the, the people coming after us into the room filled with smoke. Uh -huh. Like the people banging on the cabinet door? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Then uh, we sneak out of the room filled with smoke. While they're like, "What? Why is the room filled with smoke?" There's no ventilation in this room. Yeah, there's none. We, and they're also like, "We need to get some ventilation in this room." Yeah, OSHA violations out the wazoo. Right. <laughs> so I think so. The I think the concept being the two of us who are not good at turning invisible all of a sudden will go hide, hide in the room, um, mm -hmm. and like then in the smoke. Mm -hmm. In the smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, I will sh I will show you how to use a piece of fabric to make a makeshift ventilator if you have a piece of fabric you can use. I don't know if you do or not. Um, I'll take the fabric out of my Molotov cocktail. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be great to oh, inhale. That's great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, uh, so we'll, the two of us will hide. I actually think it's probably good to have Lav go down and let them in because Lav can actually just be invisible. Uh, I can actually be invisible. I also have light, which I want to use at some point. I wonder how. <laughs> like blind someone, maybe. Yeah, that that uh, that was that was my idea. Sort of like, um, sort of like make them stunned almost. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let them in, stun them with blindness, and then please. sneak out. Yeah, uh -huh. that that's that's a good plan. So you're gonna you could turn invisible, go down the hallway. They can flood in. You come up behind them, blind them with light, and then the rest of us. And then you out. sneak out. That's how you sneak out. Right. The, the non-invisible. So, th so that's the plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it's safe to sneak out, I'll do the shave and a haircut knock on the cavern wall. 
Wh what is that? Oh, uh, it's uh, Shane Bob. and a haircut. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Um. So love goes down this secret corridor, right? I'll, mm -hmm. yes. I'll follow love a little bit down just so I can hide in the hallway mm -hmm. while they come in. So I'll be mm -hmm. I'll be on the other side of them once they pass me by, and I'll just use my second daily use of hide. All right. All right. Um, you immediately notice, love, that there is no banging on the cabinet doors. No, not anymore. Okay. It is silent on the other side of that door. How much is two rounds in game time? Uh, is it Twenty minutes. Like, or? No, more like uh, twenty. Wait, which ability are you looking at? It's invisibility for two rounds. I think it is. It'd be like uh, two minutes, right? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I might. Okay, I'm gonna signal to everyone <laughs> with my colors uh, to hide, to, like lay low. What do they color for lay low? I think it's some green or purplish. Actually, I'll just call. Like, if you if you give me the lay low signal, I'll just call them into the hallway. Does okay. that make sense? Okay, I'm just like, like you're call, calling yeah. the signal. Yeah. Um. And I'm opening the door. Uh, all right. The room behind it is empty. OK. Just the broken glass and the uh, dead bugs and the huge shedded skin. Is it like, is it dark empty or like lit up empty? Like, can I see that it's Yeah, empty there's still totally? the uh, lantern that was here when you, uh, yeah, yeah. when you arrived. So the room is okay. lit. OK. Hmm. We're gonna put out that lantern too. Yeah, we gotta take that lantern. <laughs> gotta get, gotta get them all. Yeah. Do you, do you all want to just like leave because they're like we don't see them. As here, long as so. they're not gonna ambush us as we're going back out the exit, I, yeah. I don't see it, well, we shouldn't just leave. Yeah. All I mean, right. Yeah, Knife, the... Knives ready, but but let's um, go. I, like okay, I'm gonna lead the party probably mm -hmm. because I have I can blind everyone if they're gonna like ambush us. Um, so yeah, let's let's go. Um, all right. Where's the exit, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you make your way down uh, through this room, um, through the uh, workshop room. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you move pretty silently and uh, like looking for an ambush. Uh, nothing really happens. You get to this junction, um, and you like a quick glance down that left corridor to the door which uh, Thrag managed to, to drive a nail into the lock. Uh, but there's no movement at all. Um, no ambush, no sounds, no uh, goblins running around. And you make it to the uh, front door again. And you are out. <laughs> all right. Oh. Head, head back to Infinopolis. <laughs> um, uh... With four sacks of weed. Four sacks of weed. Um, the the best loot I've ever gotten in an OSR dungeon crawl. Um, do we um, do we want to go through any of this? Is there any like when just to give people a taste of it? Do we want to do any sort of like city inter city interactions? Like we need to find a place to sell this this weed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking that I mean. Uh, this city, Infinopolis, in my head, is just, it's very, very old and ancient. Uh, like, all the buildings were probably built a long, long time ago. Uh, their original purpose, like, lost in history. Like, it might have been a church, then used as a library, then a school, then a gladiator arena. There's really no way of telling. And there's, a like, an eclectic mix of different building styles different materials being used as uh, as um, kind of like uh, La Sagrada Familia in uh, Barcelona, like different architects building stuff uh, <laughs> from time to time. Uh, and there's just a, a whole bunch of people living here. Um, like the, it, it's really big. The districts are so big. So people are like being born in a district and they die in the same district. Um, and it's rules wise it consists of nine districts six of them which are always there i actually drew it up before 
using the uh, tools. So this is kind of what the city looks like. Six of the districts are always there. And that's the bazaar, the marketplace, uh, and the slums, uh, the temple district, uh, the pleasure dome, and the noble, no, wait, the gardens, maybe. No, the noble quarters. And the rest of these circles are like filled out randomly every time you go back to the city uh, to illustrate how much it changes over time and how quickly it changes and alters. Uh, uh, yeah. So right now, what are our? We've got the six main districts: the bazaar, the temple, gar the temple, the gardens, the pleasure dome, the slums, and the noble quarters. What are the three? Um, what are the three city parts of the city that are here this time? Uh, that will be the guild halls, uh, the necropolis, like a huge graveyard sprung up. Maybe some war happened just instantly while you were away, and there was a sudden need to bury a lot of people. Uh, also, the arena, the fighting arena. Uh, and the the gardens. Cool. Uh, the gardens so oh, the gardens should be there all the time. They should, yeah. So You're right. Uh, so so we've gardens, got guild halls, bizarre. we've got academy, and what? Uh, guild halls, academy, necropolis, That's and arena. Okay. Um. So we're. I guess we're actually really just going to the bazaar, probably. Yeah. Hmm. Or the academy, not mm -hmm. a bad place yeah. to sell students, trucks. right? Fair. The, students. The, the question is, do we want to make a bulk sale, or do we want to do we want to you know parse this out? Uh, right. Uh, uh, and I just asked, is is there a farmers market? Is there a farmers market? <laughs> of course there is. It's, of course there is. Alex, that totally could be understand. your game design contribution to down we go. You can you can write up the farmers market district. Uh, yeah. Damn. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't fully understand what it is we're selling. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so you want to head off to the bazaar, am I right? Yeah, I think probably. That makes the most sense. And you want to find a buyer for your uh, your weed. Yes. How many um, bags do you have? I have four bags. So we're gonna sell three bags. That that I think is the right move. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, there is no problem. Wait, just let me uh, just let me open something here. <laughs> Do you want? Yeah, because whenever we travel to or from a district, we or whenever we're traveling between districts, we have to roll a d6 to see uh, how it goes. <laughs> that is right. That is right. So go ahead and. Um, since I know what the outcomes are, um, why doesn't somebody else roll that d6? Oops. Oh. Our GM. Oh. Oh. That's not good. Never mind. We'll figure out that in a second. I'll roll it because I know what it is. It's four. So we are going to get there um, whenever whenever Marcus is hopefully back in just a second. So how's it going? How's it going? <laughs> oh, yay. Oh. Okay. Yay. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Neither do we. Uh, we, did, we did get there, though. We I rolled a four. Okay, perfect. So you you uh, you get to the bazaar in one piece. You find your way. No time spilt. And uh, 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 wait, just let me open this. There we go. The bazaar. I don't have this all memorized just yet. Uh, I am also able to quickly go through it. Uh, so yeah, is this is this the blind bazaar, okay, the cool. second bazaar? Now we're gonna you you roll a d4 and tell us a little bit about the bazaar. This is actually I rolled this up before. This is actually the singing bazaar right now. Uh, somehow, some way, maybe it's the uh, latest fad. But everybody is just you you hear music everywhere, just various types of music, different genres. Everybody's singing all around. Uh, it, I mean, it's a bit eerie, to be honest, all these different styles of music and song just mixing together, uh, while at the same time, just thousands of uh, merchants screaming, uh, like, come get this, come get this, special price, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it's almost like a, almost deafening, to be honest. Uh, but you managed to find a trader uh, that actually is selling, uh, like, same kind of pipes uh hookahs hookahs is that the right word yeah yeah uh, oh yeah right uh and one thing sticks out in particular about this merchant and 
uh, Richard, what is that? What sticks out about this merchant? Um, for someone we're about to make this particular deal with, really total square. <laughs> okay, total like a, total square. Total, total square. square. Uh, okay, so he has like, like a gray formal attire on. No, too boring show. to be even an undercover cop. <laughs> oh my god! All well, right. He's not even. Welcome trying. to John's ex <laughs> Hookah Emporium. My name is John. How can I serve you? <laughs> uh, um. All right. How can I help you this fine day? Yeah. Um. Like I the would like, like to buy your finest herb. Yeah, his his the music that's being sung is like you know make your own kind of music. Um. Do you uh, do you want us to role play through this, or are we are we? Uh, we can we can just make the transaction. Sure. We don't have to. Either to I mean either play. way is fine with me. I just wanted to make sure it was clear. Uh, um, but yeah, I so think we're just gonna try to sell him three of these four bags of of uh, <clears throat> of weed. Uh, of fantasy let's, weed. Let's be very clear. Yes. You can you can uh, roll a d6 to see how much this is worth. All right. That's a five. That's a five. Hey. So that's uh, that's considered medium loot. Uh, and you can roll me three d6s. Uh, do each of you want to roll a d6? Why sure. not? Oh, gosh. One. Six. MB, are you and... still there? Yep, I am. You want to roll a d6? Uh... The last time I rolled it wasn't very good. It's a four. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's a total of eleven. Uh, he is willing to give you eleven hundred gold pieces for this. Wow. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Um, that is pretty good. So yeah. I mean, I, I'm fine taking the eleven hundred gold pieces uh, for this this medium loot. <laughs> um, do y'all? Uh, let's let's uh, let's split this up. Uh, since uh, since we have the permit and we'll be back next week, uh, let's see what's the what's the. I'm trying to think about how you divide 1,100 by four uh, in reasonably even parcels. Uh, uh, don't the pets get a share? Yeah, Ted, yeah, Ted is getting also cranky. Get an even share with their owner. He's pecking so at the it, It's still the same math. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, let's so see. That's seven. You what? The, the pets getting even share with the owners would be 157. 157? Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, four, four ways, it's 275. What if we did that Richard and I each get 300 uh, and y'all each get 250? <laughs> um, you know me, I'm just, in, I'm just in it for the fun. I think, like, I'm fine with goes, that. Like, is it is it gold money or what kind of like cash is it? Uh, it is gold money, yeah. Okay, lava goes just consumes it. <laughs> just melts it. It becomes <laughs> part of the lava. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'd like to note that Boronite, because we're in this musical bazaar, uh, Boronite has been dancing this whole time. He loves to dance, and he's doing his gang signature move, the Hornet Boy Shuffle. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> Just wanted to be nice. Give us a little taste of what that looks like right now on camera. It's a little bit of, it's like a little bit of like that. <laughs> that's, and that's the Hornet Boy Shuffle. There was also a lot of really impressive footwork that went went with that. that we yeah, oh, there's see. like a huge, there's like a huge tap dance that you can't see. Yeah, you you as soon as you start dancing, you notice some uh, some uh, suspicious looking dudes with uh, big snakes tattooed on their foreheads, <gasps> just looking kind of like, hey, what's up? This is my turf. No. Ah, but they, they don't do anything. They okay. just notice you. He's, yeah. He's he's getting ready to <laughs> duke it out. Awesome. Wait, is it a duke it out or is it gonna be a dance off if if trouble goes down? Uh it may start as a dance off, but a dance of a dance off that gets violent. A dance of a death. A dance of death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it's the singing bizarre, uh, you always dance the dance of death. Um <laughs> Uh, well, awesome. all right. Um, you sold your loot. You you split your money. 
And uh, so let's start the next session in, in Infinopolis and maybe spend the money or. Yeah, that's why that's why I mean, partially mm -hmm. I was rigging it up. So we got slightly more money since we'll definitely be here next week to spend that money. Uh, and not everybody else will. Uh, yeah. However, um, if y'all come back, you should bring your money back with you uh, and spend it because uh, we'll be in Infinopolis again. Uh, so we can look at that. Um, let's take uh, let's do a quick reaction roll because uh, I would love to hear from y'all. Uh, this is a little bit different than normal, but we will still kind of do it like we normally do. Uh, reaction roll is a live stream within a live stream. It's where we sit down with a designer of a game that we just played and talk about what our thoughts were on that game. Right now, we're actually doing a public play test over the next few weeks uh, during June, uh, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern time of Down We Go, which is a minimalist OSR-inspired system uh, by Marcus, uh, who has just run us through it. Uh, we are actually going to be working towards a print version of this game that's going to be including some new content, and that's some of the stuff that we're actually exploring, including a mega dungeon that we've just been in and the new Infinopolis, which is kind of some city uh, mechanics uh, as well. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I've been able to play this before. Uh, I'm also going to be totally biased, um, but I would love to hear uh, feedback and thoughts uh, and this is developmental, so feel free to be critical if you have thoughts, if you have questions. Um, you know, lots of times people are just like, I loved it, it was great, but ask questions or give input uh, if y'all want to about what you think could be better or different or just thoughts you have that you think we should be considering as we work our way through this game. Uh, let's start with uh, MV. MV, you played Lava Ghost, the first non-human entity uh, to, uh, to enter into the dungeons and down we go. And it was a blast because I knew you would come up with something amazing, whether it was a, a roller skating demon or something else. And so, uh, what was it? What was playing down? You go down. We go like for you. Well, um, it's it's like my uh, like good OSR experience essentially. Um, what I've noticed is that like the optimum play is when you like never have to roll almost <laughs> like, and that's what this felt like like i've yeah except like attack rolls i've not rolled for like doing actually doing anything and that's i think that i think is um yeah a strong suit because the abilities you have you don't roll for them and the game even like asks that only roll when you just save against something so it's like it um it encourages the style of play which i enjoy um it feels more like this conversational flow with the GM, like, oh, can I do this? Will this work? And etc. And you don't rely on like um, risk management and like dice as much. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any questions for now. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed this um, session. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alex, let's hear from you next. Uh, yeah, well, uh, there should be a farmer's market. Uh, no, <laughs> it's, I thought, it's written down. <laughs> uh, no, I thought that, uh, the whole like a city thing and the, uh, setup mm. of the world that we had was really cool in that it gave us a, not like motivation, but a, a clear concept of what this world is and what the people in it want without being so specific that we were constrained in how we made our characters, which was really cool. Um, but then like also what MV said, like it felt so conversational. It wasn't focused on the roles. And I really like that because uh, full disclosure, I don't know much about like OSR or like what counts <laughs> as OSR or not. Um, but what I play the most of is like 5e, like D&D 5e. So just like the freedom of not having to roll for everything and having like, like we would fight and it would be so simple in a good way. That was like delightfully freeing. Um, and I also, I don't know if this is like specifically part of the game or just you as uh, a GM, but I really like like being asked questions where we got to invent things about the world further, not just yeah. like, what our character does but being asked like what have you heard about this or what does this guy look like um it like blurred the lines between i feel like usually it's like the gm creates the world and the players play in it but i really liked how it, it we got we got to create the world as well uh i have a question but it might be 
silly, and I also don't know if you want to answer it, but I had my working theory of what this dungeon was uh-huh. in my head, and I want to put my theory out there, but you might not want to. I, I, it's probably not right. You can put your Go theory ahead. out Go there ahead. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought that we were traversing into a buried spaceship. The same thing. I was thinking it was a spaceship because of all, because of all the metal. Because of all the metal, and then we got these funky humanoid but not human creatures. I was like, oh. They, but and now we know they came from the mountains, so now I yeah. don't know. Uh, or, but or I was like, we? oh. Here's the thing. Stay tuned to find out if you're right. Right, there's more. <laughs> there's more. And we got this lab with the bugs. And I, I did want to meet that big, that big silverfish. So I guess I got to come back. I guess Vorlite's right. got to make a comeback. I guess you do. I guess you do, yeah. But interesting yeah mm-hmm. thank you for letting me be a part of this it was so much fun <laughs> it was it was i'm not gonna tell you if your theory is right or not fair, fair. but um very interesting yeah uh richard let's hear from you <laughs> yeah i really a if anybody has new replacement d20s i'm about <laughs> to throw out my entire bag <laughs> like i went through a whole bunch and just kept getting crap i just you know i i if you've got new ones please send them uh, but otherwise, yeah, otherwise than just utter betrayal by dice that you've given money in a home to for years, uh, that uh, I, I really I really had a lot of fun. Uh, I love just, you know, abilities that just work. Um, yeah. I think a lot of OSR systems kind of struggle with how to implement that and with the fact that you just kind of, you just kind of put it out there very, and then it gave really good uh, suggestions for which ones they could be. And I love that there were some of them that could also really, really kind of work just in Infinopolis. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only work in Infinopolis, but really work especially well in Infinopolis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, like contact for, for Sneaky um, worked really well. Uh, yeah, the whole like, you know, character building character sheet was, was a blast to kind of sort through. Um, and uh, the rules are just so ultra simple that it was, it was, absolute delight to play um and then yeah infinopolis uh i mean just beyond the 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 weird dungeon and the the consistently weird vibe we got from it um and the uh like we chose to get in a fight i also love the fact that we chose to get in a fight we weren't just like confronted with a fight uh that uh but that the, the weird the, the weird dungeon and then also just Infinopolis was just a blast to like just the little vision we got of it was a lot of fun. So, yeah. all right, nice, thanks. Yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned those skills specifically because Marcus and I were talking about that earlier this week. He was like thinking maybe he was going to change what is it contacts or appraise, and I was like, no. Now that Infinopolis exists, those things are way better. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Thank uh, you for pointing that out. Yeah. And so, like, because I, I, I is one of my, it was one of my favorite things was that even from the get go, there was, there was no city that existed when Down We Go first got created, but there was already a feeling of like, okay, there is life outside the dungeon, and that's one of the things that got me most excited about the game initially um, was this concept of a city exists in some way, shape, or form, and you're going to it and from it. Uh, but it was pretty basic conceits. But I, I loved contacts is like one of my favorite abilities, and that Marcus wrote into the game. Um, mm. And so, um, like, I mean, it doesn't do anything in, in a dungeon, but it does give you potentially information or like a room or something that might be helpful while you're down there while still driving narrative forward. Um, mm. So um, I'm super excited about it. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, Malcolm Little, uh, who's watching on Facebook, said the OSR is quiet maxim. I think this is in regards to what MV said. Uh, if you have to roll, it's too dangerous, 100%. Uh, so, uh, and we took some damage this time. Um, I, I think the like one of the things I love about the game is because of the way the abilities happen, there's a constant feeling of, of real tactical decisions happening, not just like, hey, can I slog this out or how are the dice rolls going to make? There is really more of a management of my abilities uh, that's mm-hmm. happening. And I just, I, I, I dig that, uh, that feel. So, um, that's awesome. We're going to be back every week at, uh, 3 PM. Um, I'll be here. Uh, Marcus and I are going to switch out GMing a little bit, but for the next first two weeks, it'll be, uh, Marcus. And then we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. Uh, we may, we may shift that around also too, but we'll, we'll take some turns. Uh, and then Richard's going to be <clears throat> back with us, uh, every week. So we'll get to see, uh, see more of Bourbon and, um, 
Thrag's adventures together. And then um, MV and Alex were our guests for the day. They may be back as we go, but we'll have some other folks who are hopping in as just kind of one shot so we get a lot of players in. Uh, if you're out there watching right now and you want a chance to play this game, you can go buy the one-page version of it. Uh, and there's a couple of dungeon adventures that Marcus already has up uh, over on Drive Through RPG. Um, we'll also have an Ashcan version up uh, coming soon that people can get. Uh, we're working our way up to a print run. Uh, we've got some amazing new art um, that is it. Is it Simon or Simone? Do you know, Marcus? I know I've only ever. Read it's uh, it's uh, Simone. Simone, um, yep. who is a phenomenal artist who's doing some uh, some absolutely great new work for us. You can see it around our faces right now. Kind of this new skeletal. Uh, creature we've added on uh, so we're, we're expanding and growing it out working up to a print run later on uh, this summer probably um, I don't think it'll be too long before you'll be able to have it in your hands uh, but Marcus has done a phenomenal job building the game we've got some great collaborators we're pulling in uh, and it will be open for people to hack so you know Alex can make the farmer's market district of the bazaar uh, people can add in what they want to uh, but I'm super excited to be able to kind of continue to explore the dungeon uh, with everybody real quick before we go um, I'd love to have everybody just kind of say who they were again and where people can find you online. So MV, tell people who you are, what you do, where they can find you online. Uh, I'm MV, I uh, use they, he, uh, screenwriter, game designer based on Belgium. You can find my stuff at mvmv.info and follow me at Visit on Twitter. Lots of stuff coming in June, including a uh, Lux Collective, which is a, a group of uh, like-minded game designers uh, doing itch funding. You can find more about that at luxcollective.crg.co. And I'm just hosting a bunch of jams also during the summer. So stay tuned. Okay. Uh, let's hear from Alex. Alex, tell people who you are, what you do, where they can find you online. Sure. I'm Alex Kingsley, they, she pronouns. Uh, I work with Strong Branch Productions, where I do game design, as well as podcast production. And our current podcast is called The Stench of Adventure. It's a sci-fi comedy, and you can find it pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. And, uh, you, oh yeah, you can find me online at Alexi Quest on Twitter, TikTok, Tumblr, what have you. Awesome. Uh, Richard, tell people where they can find you online and all your stuffs. <clears throat> Hey, I'm Richard Wayne, and I use he, him pronouns. And uh, you can find me at rook at uh, .itch.io is my storefront. And then you can also find me on Twitter at uh, ARR underscore ROO. Awesome. Uh, and Marcus, if people want to follow this, um, I think best place, I mean, you, they can find you on Facebook, right? But you don't, you're not on yeah. the Twitters. Uh, drive through RPG. Um, Apes yeah. of Wrath, uh, I'll make sure that's linked in the description for the video. So if you want to go uh, check it out, any other good places for them to find your stuff online? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I, I need to expand uh, uh, before next time, I think. Now, I want to have uh, cool ads like you guys have, like um, you folks have. Uh, but uh, we again, we'll, if you want to check out uh, our itch, it's uh, I actually think it breaks our normal naming nomenclature. There's only two places. I think it's Tony plus one. And I think one of those is itch and one of those is twitch. Um, the, the, the um, and so uh, if you want to follow us, keep up to date on, on the project specifically. We'll have some more information about that next week. Uh, set up in a little bit more formal way, but you can go to Tony. It's uh, what is it? Tony plus one dot itch dot IO um, or plus one exp dot com or just hit us up at plus one exp across all the social media platforms. But we'll be back next week uh, diving back into the dungeon. Uh, we still got a bag of weed left. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll figure out what this metal skull does also too. Uh, and you know, maybe die also too. So, uh, uh, until next time, we're just going to wave at the screen until I take us off air. Bye everybody. Thank you so much, everybody.